At City Field in New York, Pix 11 Sports presents New York Mets baseball. Today, the Mets play the Milwaukee Brewers. New York Mets baseball is brought to you by Hyundai. Make this summer better than ever. Visit the Hyundai Memorial Day sales event for incredible deals. By M&T Bank, what's important to you is important at M&T Bank. Learn more at mtb.com slash meet us. By Nissan, get a safe ride with sound savings during Nissan's Safety Today event. Shop choosenissan.com. By Raymore and Flanagan Furniture, furnishing your style. By the New York Lottery, take a break from the expected. Play scratch-off games from the New York Lottery. And by ChevyOffers.com. Get into City Field. Welcome. A lot of people lined up to come on in. Now, that's not Keith in the booth taking your cash like last year, but they're very pleasant as they let you into the parking lot. And they're coming from all over to watch Jacob DeGrom and the Mets today. And a pleasant good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to City Field. Gary Cohen, Keith Hernandez with you today as the Mets play the middle game of their series against the Milwaukee Brewers. Mets won last night, but they've got some increasing injury problems to worry about. You already know David Wright is battling a chronic back condition. He's in the lineup today, but Lucas Duda is out. Lucas, who was on the disabled list for a while last year with back problems, missed a couple of games earlier this week. The injury report brought to you by Affinity Health Plan. He was scratched from the lineup today, had an MRI. They're not sure sure how serious it is but this right now Keith appears to be an ongoing issue well her back is a very tricky thing I can attest to that I have a chronic back and it ended my career shortened my career so it's a very tricky thing you do a lot of torso twisting when you're hitting and you got a back problem that's not good for being productive you know we talked earlier Gary over our little meal before the game here about how you know how disappointing it must be for, for Flores to have the, have the hamstring problem because he would be the guy that would be playing first base and getting this added uh, game time with David Wright and and now Duda but it's going to be Campbell and Campbell will see how what kind of job he's he's go, he's going to do he's going to play a lot and I really enjoy our little meals kid I, I do too <laughs> and what it also means is that the Mets are shorthanded on the bench and something they appear to be quite frequently this year well injuries do that and uh, you know you've got a triple 18 that's way across the over in Las Vegas it's hard to get shuttle them in and out uh, so Terry has been hamstrung this year I think he's done a heck of a job managing this ball club with uh, you know he's due to is not probably not going to be available tonight Jacob DeGrom takes the mound for the Mets this afternoon he's been extraordinary this year despite not possessing his best fastball well I really enjoyed his last start I watched on TV those are the kind of games that I like to watch DeGrom where he doesn't have command of his stuff and how he battles through it he pitched through this into the seventh inning with the lead I uh, wound up getting a no decision well he's coming back now I think he's due for a big one he's had great success so far in his first four starts against the Brewers three and one lifetime and he'll try and keep that going this afternoon as the Mets continue their series with Milwaukee on a cool afternoon in New York all the action coming your way on Pix 11.
and 110. The first 15,000 fans will receive a bat and ball set as part of Major League Baseball's Play Ball Weekend. After the game, all kids 12 and under can run the bases in the Mr. Med Dash, courtesy of Northwell Health. For tickets, visit Mets.com slash Family Sundays. Themes of the game brought to you by your local Hyundai dealer. Well, a toast of, excuse me, toast of New York. The Brewers, as you can see in Queens, have had success. Bottoms up, Conforto last night, beautiful home run opposite field. And the starting pitcher, he is all of six feet tall, 155 pounds, and that glass is however you want to look at, either half empty or half full. He lo looks like he's not old enough to drink out of that half full glass, Zach Davies. <laughs> like he's about 12 years old but he's been effective <laughs> lately and Mets will try and get him today. Mets and Brewers first pitch from the big city coming right up. In his last start in Colorado, despite his lowest fastball velocity of his career, got no decision in that game. He'll look for better today against this starting lineup for the Brewers, brought to you by Nissan. Shop ChooseNissan.com. Again, no Ryan Braun for the sixth time in the last seven games. He's got back issues of his own, and that makes this a very different looking Brewers lineup that was held to just three hits last night by Steven Matz and the Mets bullpen. I like beautiful shot there. I like this. Up close and personal. That's sweet. Why didn't they think of that when I was a little kid growing up? I would have flipped out over that. They didn't have the handheld cameras. Well, there's Jacob DeGrom here, and this will be his seventh start. I told you he's uh, three and one a lifetime against the Brewers in his young career with an ERA sparkling 1.38. Coming off a so-so start, but a battling start, which is, like I said in the open, those are the kind of games I love to watch him pitch because he fights through it. Only eight walks and 36 innings pitched. Outstanding. And we'll take a look at the defense, the Mets defense, brought to you by your Tri-Honda dealers. And there's the hero of tonight, last night's game, Michael Conforto, clutch out. Cabrera at shortstop. He now has 40 starts. He leads the team in starts in the four first 42 games. Campbell at first. Uh, Pawecki, of course, behind the plate, who's been getting the lion's share of the playing time. 
Well, Eric Campbell getting a lot of time, whether filling in for Wright at third or for Duda at first. Ninth time in the last 13 games that Campbell has started. Jonathan VR leads off from Milwaukee. It'll be VR, Scooter Jeanette, and Jonathan Lucroy for the Brewers, who came to New York having won two out of three from the high flying Cubs, but got held in check last night. Chris Carter hit a first inning home run off Steven Matz, and then they had one base runner the rest of the game. VR one for four last night. Switch hitter batting left handed, and DeGrom set to go. His first pitch fastball's in for a strike, and we're underway. You know what's interesting? There's a 94 mile an hour fastball. There's so much scrutiny now on this Met pitching staff after going into the postseason, Gary. You know, so and so's miles per hour are down uh, to compared to last year. I find it uh, just really like they're pitching under a microscope. Well, that's what happens when you are the most highly touted pitching staff in decades. And with all the innings that they rolled up last year, not surprising to see some of those velocities a little lower than they were. And nobody has taken more of a hit on his velocity than DeGrom. And yet, he's been able to fashion positive results through his first half dozen starts, not only dealing with the diminished velocity, but also uh, the birth of his son and his medical problems. Hook down the right field line and a base hit for VR. Takes the turn. He'll head for second and make it easily with a leadoff double. So VR, who led off the ball game with a base hit last night against Mats, leads off the ball game with a double tonight, uh, today against DeGrom. Change up, too much plate. Had him out in front. If he had had it on the outside corner, I think it would have been off the end of the bat and would have had the out. But he left it too much over the plate. The uh, changeup has got to be on the outside corner with a righty against a lefty or vice versa. So now Scooter Jeanette, who didn't start last night against the left hander. Jeanette hitting just 242. His numbers have fallen off the last couple of years after a very good first and second year in the big leagues. Right in on the grass against the threat of the bunt. And Jeanette locked one foul. Well, DeGrom in his last start was at 91.4, which is the lowest of his career. You know, sometimes you go out there and you have your fastball. I mean, I faced Tom Seaver how many times? Most of the time, Tom had his fastball. Maybe just one or two times he didn't. It happens. But when a pitcher's velocity is consistently down nearly three miles an hour from the year before, as DeGrom's has been, it certainly opens your eyes. It does. And like you said, though, you've got to take into consideration that he missed some time with the birth of the baby uh, and the difficult birth. And he's, I think he's kind of just rounding into form, Care Also had the lat injury that he yep. had to work through before that. And if you go back to previous years, DeGrom's velocity has tended to increase as the year has gone along. And I think that's one thing that gets overlooked in that is that for a lot of the pitchers, their velocity will increase when the weather gets a little bit warmer. And it's, we certainly have had no warm weather so far this year. It's a warm weather sport, Gare. One and two to Jeanette. Struck him out. 95 from DeGrom for the first out of the day. Well, I'll tell you what, that's, if you're a hitter, that's discouraging. Three swings, three fastballs, no contact. That will get you shaking your head. And a chance to get the runner over and doesn't get it done. First hairpiece of the day. Now Jonathan Lucroy over three last night. Lucroy's batting average dipping below 300 with 298. Lucroy really isn't a third hitter. He's a very fine hitter. He's someone that is in. And you're going to have to forgive me, folks. I still got this bronchial thing. I'll try to keep my my voice from cracking. I'll get you some tea. But uh, Lucroy is really like a fifth or sixth hitter and a very good one. Well, no, you'd want in the middle of your order. Normally they'll hit Braun third, but with Braun out of the lineup, this is a very different looking Milwaukee team. Yes. I mean, Braun is off to a fabulous start this year, but he had uh, wrist issues and now he has back problems, had offseason back surgery, and so the Mets getting the benefit of Braun's absence, at least so far in this series. 
Rom keeping his eye on VR as he takes his lead. And he gets ahead on Luke Roy. 0 and 2. Well, Luke Roy had his really his bust out year, his best season in 2014, where he hit 301. Last year, only played in 103 games, had an injury. Fractured left great toe. He missed a lot of time, hit 264. Chris Carter waiting on deck. He had the early blow in yesterday's game. Oh, and two to Luke Roy. Degrom comes upstairs, one and two. And that's what Degrom does so well, and what Syndergaard is learning to do now uh, is really improved on. Is that get ahead in the count and throw that fastball about chin level, see if you can get a. A strikeout because when you throw hard like that man right there, they're not going to catch up to you. He'll observing today, he'll be on the mound tomorrow in the final game of the series. And Luke Roy fouls off the fastball. Well, Jacob DeGrom has been the sunshine Superman in his career. 22 starts in his career in the daytime, 13 and 2 with a 1.39 ERA. Donovan. And even better, he's been mellow yellow. When pitching in the daytime at City Field, 10 starts in the daytime here, 5 and 1, 0 0.84. Like mellow orange and blue. <laughs> Breaking ball, bloop behind first. Campbell going back, and over the shoulder, he makes the grab. Nicely done by Eric Campbell, who made a terrific play in the ninth inning last night, playing third base. This time going away for the second out. Very nice play here for a man that is playing an all different positions the corner infield positions and really first base is the latest addition those aren't easy plays they should be made but they're not a piece of cake nicely done you haven't been around the bag with soup have you no I haven't I can't get around that I can't bend over anymore Pull well you were out there with Wilmer well I, if, I, if I, I didn't get struck yeah that's, that was spring right that's, that's what I meant <coughs> I didn't know whether he was part of that tutorial. Chris Carter goes after the fastball and misses. Carter hit his 13th home run last night. Ties him with Cespedes, one behind Nolan Arenado for the National League lead. 31 RBI, 13 home runs. Big, strong guy. This guy who two years ago had 37 home runs with the Astros, and he might have been as good a bargain as there was on the free agent market this past winter he wound up signing a one year deal for two and a half million dollars. Mm. I'll take it. Fifty three strikeouts so far this season just all or nothing. Change of misses two and one. Well, Trevor Story and has had a great start to his season John Carlos Stanton how about the last four games for him. All for 14 with 12 yep. strikeouts. Goldsmith's a shock. He's such a good hitter. One of the best hitters in the game. That's where you got to pitch him right there. He hasn't got to you throw him a change up. You're doing him a uh, Carter a favor. Just serious gas in there and right where he likes to put his pots and pans. Two two to Carter. Goes away with a fastball. It was a 2 2 pitch that Carter had out of the ballpark with two out of the first inning last night. And DeGrom keeping it far out of the strike zone. Kirk Neuenheis sitting fifth in the order is on deck. VR led off the inning with a double. He's still at second with two out. 3 2 coming. And he got him up and in. And DeGrom works around first inning trouble with a couple of strikeouts.
Choosenison.com. No Lucas Duda, so Neil Walker moves up to number five in the batting order for the second straight night. Campbell in there at first base. We've already seen his defensive stylings as the Mets go up against 23 year old Zach Davies. Well, the Washington, born in Washington State, six feet, 155 pounds, came over in the trade last year at the deadline from Baltimore for Gerardo Para, the outfielder. Pitched in 17 games last year for the Brewers. I'm sorry, six games, six starts. Had a terrible April and pitching much better in May. Curtis Granderson, who's in a real funk right now, leads off for New York and takes below the knees for ball one. I was looking at Granderson's walk rate because, you know, his batting average is down, and it was down early last year, but he was walking a ton. Curtis drives one to deep right field. Who needs a walk? That ball is out of here. That's one thing Curtis has been doing very well. Leading off games with home runs. The fourth time he's done it this year. The 39th time in his career. And he gives the Mets the instant 1-0 lead. Curtis is a uh, just hard to figure out. Oh, this is right down the pipe, and he made him pay the piper. But Curtis certainly has been struggling coming into the game, hitting 195. Wasn't first run of the game brought to you by Dunkin' Donuts. America runs on Dunkin'. Here's David Wright with the night off last night. He takes a strike. Who holds the record right now for most career leadoff home runs? I remember Rick, Ricky Henderson. When I was a young far. kid, it was uh, Bobby Bonds. Uh, Ricky Henderson has the, the lead by far. I think among active players, Jimmy Rollins is number one, and I think Granderson is number two. Okay. And Granderson has now hit 15 leadoff mm -hmm. home runs as a Met, which is one behind Jose Reyes's club career mark. He has the single season mark as Wright takes a call third strike for the first out. It's the 49th time that Wright has struck out. And we'll take a look at the defense of the Brew Crew brought to you by your Tri Honda dealers. Kirk Neuenheis. I know probably Ronnie mentioned it last night. Well I'm back. There he is. I knew he was in a Brewer uniform. And we got Chris Carter and Villar in the infield. He came over from Houston and of course LaCroix behind the plate. Knowledge is power. Here's Michael Conforto who hit the opposite field home run that put the Mets over the top in the sixth inning last night. And he drives one to right field chasing Flores back. He gets turned oh, around boy. and it goes to the wall. Conforto to second. He pulls in there with a well struck double. Ramon Flores got really pretzeled in right field and could not find it. Well, take him to dinner, Mr. Conforto. This had F9 written all over it. Ripped. A big hang with him, but got turned around the wrong way. Gets a double out of it. That was not played professionally. See, when Ramon Flores first got to the big leagues, it was last year with the Yankees, and that part of right field doesn't exist at Yankee Stadium. That's a good point. You know what that means then? It means it might have been a home run in Yankee Stadium. Or at least off the wall on the fly. So, Conforto's at second with one out, and here's Cespedes, who continues to hit the ball hard regularly, one for three last night. Leads the league in slugging percentage at 642. And takes a cutter for a strike. Who's hot brought to you by Geico. 15 minutes can save you 15% or more on car insurance. Abracadabra. Carrie, I didn't know you were a magician. <laughs> now you see it, now you don't. That's hit hard down the line. Foul. So the Mets getting some great swings early in this game against Zach Davies. With the largest three hits and six and a third against the Padres last time out, but right now it's a shooting yellow. They're hitting some rockets, and Cespedes is, I think, uh, we've seen enough of him now. You know, last year was just incredible what he did the last two months of the season for the Mets. But what he's done so far carrying it forward this season, this man can play the game.
Let me ask you this then. Cespedes is clearly the biggest threat in this lineup right yes. now. At what point do teams start treating him with a little bit more respect in terms of maybe pitching around him in these spots? Uh, I think you're going to find it more against the upper echelon teams there. Yeah. When the games mean something in, in, in division. Cespedes goes down on the breaking ball. I mean they all mean these games are all important. But you know what I'm driving at. Change up from Davies. Now we mentioned Stanton. What did he do today? He, he struck yeah, out they, yesterday. It, uh, 0 for 4, 3 strikeouts. Again. Yeah, so he's 0 for 14, 12 strikeouts the last four games. Here's Neil Walker with a runner at second and two out. Walker 0 for 3 last night, hitting a 255 for the year. I was going to say about Curtis Granderson before he hit the home run. Last year he had 91 walks. We're a quarter of the way through the season, he has only 16. And so that's really the difference for him. He it's wasn't hitting early last year either, but he was drawing a ton of walks. On the pace of around 65, 64. Good curveball this kid has. Not overpowering. This is like, you know, I know all the, the guns and the sabermetric evaluators now I want everybody to throw 100 miles an hour. But it's an art for a guy that's not overpowering to go out there and deal, mix his pitches up. I just love pitchers that can have the ability to do that. To me, they're infinitely more fun to watch than the, the Blazers. Mm. Well, Greg Maddox didn't cast much more of a menacing shadow than Zach Davies. Well, though. Glavin didn't throw that hard. Mm. Lefties are different, though. That's I mean, true. I mean, generally, soft tossing lefties is something you always see in the game. But you know, right handers who are short and slender and don't throw hard, they, there aren't that many of them around. Hmm. And the high curveball gets Walker swinging, so Davies winds up striking out three in the inning. But not before Curtis Granderson gets the Mets the early lead. Curtis potent early. His eighth home run, four of them have come leading off the first inning. And the Mets take a 1 0 lead into the second. By Toyota, the Toyota Time sales event ends May 31st. Hurry in today, Toyota. Let's go places. Kirk Neuenheis leads off of the Brewers in the second and goes after the first pitch fastball from Jacob DeGrom. Neuenheis 0 for 3 in his return to City Field last night, but he didn't go away completely empty handed. He did receive his National League championship ring, as did Carlos Torres. A little ceremony before. For the game last night, <coughs> Terry Collins, assistant GM John Rico, presenting the former Mets who were part of the 
championship team last year with their rings. It's been an ongoing process over the first couple of months of the season as players who were part of it but no longer a part of the organization get presented with those rings. I, I haven't been keeping track as to whether there's anybody left who has not yet gotten their hardware. It's a fastball for a strike two and two. But that's got to be a bittersweet thing right you're, yes. you're with another organization and you get the ring but you're not really able to celebrate it with your in front your of the fans on, on opening day yeah. you know it's really special it's you know happened fortunately for me twice in my career. By the way speaking of a man who earned a ring last year and he earned it you know by giving his body in the process. Did you see that Ruben Tejada pitched the ninth inning yes, for I St. Did. Louis last night? He got clobbered. Well, he gave him a couple of home runs. But he was throwing pretty good. Tommy Hutton pitched against me in St. Louis when he was with the Phillies in a blowout game, and I hit a three run home run off him. Excuse me, a 3 2 curveball. 3 2 to Newton Heiss, and he pounds one into the ground. Foul ball. Rom had to throw 20 pitches to get through the first inning, but along the way he had seven swings and misses in that first That's inning. It's a good sign. That's a lot in one inning. Eighth pitch to Newenheis, yes. and he gets the breaking ball in. Strike three call. All those fastballs, and he backdoored him. Paint. Third strikeout for Jake. A little Dega on the outside corner. Dega. That's very nice because most people go with Rembrandt, but I'm very impressed with your thank you your Degas because reference. impressionism was not in you know refined. I mean it was, it, it was more of a blur, so it, it blurred past the outside you could, corner. Could have gone with Renoir, Pizarro, oh Pizarro, there are lots of different ways to go. It's Aaron Hill. <laughs> <laughs> he takes a big rip at the curveball. It's one and one. I'm always impressed with not just the, the the depth but the breadth of your knowledge. Well I can also tell you that uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Pizarro was one of the fathers of impressionism. He was one of the older guys that brought on that new wonderful period of art in the late 1800s correct. Two and two was he was a pointillist. No. No, I know who would. I can't think of the name right now. With the point, I came a little bit later. Uh, Sarah was a right. What was the pointless? But it's all it's all part of the same movement. A little bit different. He painted almost like with dots. Right. You know, that's obviously pointillism. Where, I mean, Van Gogh painted with the palette and had all the texture and all of his emotion was in his painting. Mr. Degrom, he paints with horsehide. <laughs> Foul back just to our left. One very seldom to get up here. That's as close as a ball has gotten to our booth in a long time. Here we are. The ball was just over there. <laughs> was that us? Yes, you were on camera uh, for just a moment there. Too busy. I'm too busy good. clearing my throat. Could you get him a cup of tea? With a little honey. <laughs> honey. Thank you. Just watch yourself. <laughs> Another long at bat. Eighth pitch coming to Hill. And it's grounded foul. So Rom having to expend a lot of energy early in this game. Gave up the leadoff double for VR. He has struck out three of the next four hitters, but a lot of long turns at bat. And that's part of the consequence I think of not having the overpowering fastball that he had last year is that he's had trouble at times putting hitters away. And it just missed outside and Hill draws a one out walk. Well long legged Jacob deGrom will induce a very long stride home. And he has one. But he's all legs and arms. He's got very long arms, very long legs, very gangly. Look at that. He's got a basketball player's body. Yes, good call. 
One out and one on. Now Alex Presley, the left hand hitting left fielder, pops one foul. Presley filling in in left field for Ryan Braun these last few days. Started the year in the minor leagues, former big prospect with the Pirates. So the Twins finally won a game today. They scored five runs in the bottom of the eighth to beat Toronto. Their 11th win against 31 losses. Which means mm. that the Braves do not have the worst record in the major leagues. They're winning tonight, right now, this afternoon, 2 0. Seems like the only times the Braves win is when they get a shutout. Now they won last night. Matt Whistler pitched really well, beat the Phillies. I like him. Yep. He's got decent stuff. He's got a chance to be they've, very good. They've got Williams Perez going today. He's done well since they called him up. Presley takes it high, one and two. Well, you see his last two starts, and we mentioned his record in day games. He's been a man for early in the day. And the curveball lined to left but right at Conforto. And that's the second out. And Hill scampers back to first. You know, it's one of the things I notice when I look at when I fill out my scorecard and I have innings pitched, walks, strikeouts, walk strikeouts. DeGrom uncharacteristic. Characteristically, has given up 35 hits in 36 innings. Mm -hmm. Well, and his strikeout rate is down. I think that's the other thing that you see. And you know, we talk about the lack of velocity. He hasn't struck out more than six in any start this year. 23 strikeouts in 36 innings coming into the day. Here's the number eight hitter, Ramon Flores, and he takes on the corner. Flores having a tough time of it, hitting 190. A big struggle. They've got two guys in this on the bench that are under 100. Flores got his first big league experience with the Yankees last year, just 33 at bats, and then was traded twice before landing with Milwaukee, just 24 years old. Hill at first and two out. Rom already up over 40 pitches working in the second inning. And smacked to deep right field. Granderson back on the warning track at the wall. It's out of here. Wow. Ramon Flores with his first major league home run, a two run shot to put the Brewers in front two to one. Well, I, what did I just say? Hitting 190 and struggling. First home run of the year. And this was uh, impressive. This was a decent pitch. He showed a real quick bat, but the Garys that we saw in Colorado. Pitch was up. His 103rd major league at bat, his first big league home run. And just like that, the Brewers, as was the case last night, a two run homer early in the game to take the lead. Right down the pipe, up. Give him credit. Look at that, right on it. So Jacob, over his first two years with the Mets, has always been on the knees. This year, He's elevated a little bit more. Hasn't been able to find the, the consistency down and low in the strike zone as of yet. No, well, okay. This team is 18 and 24, 12 games out of first place, and they're fired up. Well, they're happy for Flores. Gets off the Schneid with his first big league home run. A ball outside Davies two and two. It's only the third home run DeGrom's given up this year. He gave up one to Carlos Gonzalez in his last start. And Davies pops it up. Ploiecki comes back for a look. And it lands just behind the screen. Now that's the thing when when you don't know a team and they're out of division and you got a youngster and Flores he's hitting 190 the pitcher in the on deck circle here's a fastball. You know he, strike three called to Davies. That's how you find out you know you just kind of snuck one in on him. You know what it wasn't a bad pitch and 
Flores in and out of the yard. And he gives the Brewers a 2 1 lead going to the bottom of the second. Through a simulated game with uh, Mets coach Tom Goodwin and Matt Reynolds taking swings against about 25 pitches for Matt as uh, he prepares for his next start against the Nats whether that be Monday or Tuesday that decision has not yet been made but you see he's uh, consulting with Dan Worth and trying to get some things figured out as he tries to shake off the effects of the worst start of his career the other night. Um sense a little frustration there in Matt I was trying to work on I guess some uh, fundies with his uh, mechanics uh, my opinion is you the only way he's going to get out of it it's like a hitter in a slump how am I going to break out of a slump if you sit me down I got to play I got to play every day and hit and get out of the slump he's got to go out there every fifth day and try to get it back he's not going to get it back if you skip him Got to keep him in his rotation, keep him in his fifth day, five day groove. As Dribble Cabrera leads off against Zach Davies and takes curveball for a strike. Kid's got a nice curveball. Davies struck out three in the first inning. He gave up a home run to Granderson, a double to Conforto. And he throws one at the feet of Cabrera, a ball and a strike. Eric Campbell on deck, then Kevin Ploiecki for the Mets in the home second. Cabrera is continuing just to sparkle. I think he's been very, very consistent outside of Cespedes, who has just been outstanding. Uh, Cabrera has been great. Carter juggles, but makes the play one out. So I had to go up to Cabrera today and, and just go. I've never seen him play every day. I went up to him. I said, Andrew, it's Drupal. You, I go, you can play. You're good. And he said, thanks. I said, you're welcome. <laughs> it's quite a conversation. <laughs> Hardest part of it sounds like it was figuring out how to pronounce his first name. Yes, exactly. I have a hard time with where the accent is supposed to be. It's in the. It's always in Spanish, and it's usually in the next to the last syllable. If I'm correct. Well, think of it this way: in in the National League East, we've got as Drupal and Odubel. That's right. Who's having a great season for the Phillies? Yes, he is. Leading off, found a home there. Two and one to Campbell. Zach Davies, as Keith mentioned, is six feet and 155 pounds, and he looks like what? He's 14 years old. He does. Well, 23 is very young. Grounded down to third, and Aaron Hill giving ground. Throws out Campbell. In the early 90s, the Mets had a left-hand pitcher named Doug Simons, 
He was only with the Mets for a year. And he was very similarly sized to Zach Davies, and he looked like he was about 12. And the Mets were playing in Montreal one day, and Simons gets to the ballpark, and they wouldn't let him into the visiting clubhouse because he didn't look like a major league ball player. He looked like some kid that just showed up and wanted to get in, <laughs> into the stadium. And he had to pull out his baseball card and show it to the security guard in order to gain admittance to the clubhouse. Actually uh, I've never carried my baseball card well, with me. He obviously needed it for identification. <laughs> Ploiecki dribbles one. Davies off the mound. And he's got himself a one two three inning with three ground balls. After two at City Field two to one Brewers. on our show this afternoon the segment is called Eddie says this is our truck out in the parking lot and this is Eddie Hi, Eddie. Eddie Warman who's uh, our brand new member of our crew he works in the uh, the graphics area look in the camera puts up all the uh, the interesting factoids that appear on your screen and um, Eddie is uh, is from LA he's uh, he, he worked on the Orioles broadcast the last several seasons so uh, he, he's kind of moved up in the world come to the, come to the big city we won't hold that against them. And um, you know Eddie is a guy from a different generation than you and I and he's he's a guy who looks at the world a little differently than you and I and he looks at baseball in a in a different fashion um, even away from from the field and, and from the truck he he has different pursuits than you and I he's a, he's a darts player. I did not know that. Yeah. He's uh, he's a big English Premier League soccer guy. OK. So the reason why we're introducing this segment called Eddie says is because Eddie has some different views on baseball different from yours and mine and Ron's out to left field and Conforto has the fly ball hit by VR. So we're going to introduce a few concepts that uh, Eddie puts forward from time to time. And here's where we start. Oh, There's Eddie, Eddie smile. He says. <laughs> Because money ball book in his hand. And he says there should be no playoffs, no World Series. Whoever has the best record at the end of the season should be champion. Period. Really? That's not going to fly, Edward. That isn't. So I, 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 I'm assuming that also as part of that, and I, I, I've kind of heard this secondhand, and, and maybe the truck can correct me if I'm wrong, that Eddie also dislikes the concept of having divisions that they should basically rank the teams one through 30 and um, and whoever has the best record like at the end wins be. and you know if you happen to finish 28th you know that's just the way it goes. Well 
Far be it for me to say he's nuts, but it sounds kind of nutty. I grew up with that thing, kind of thing too, and you have maybe 80% of the teams are 15 games out, you know, in June, and then you have no attendance. So we know what that divisions are all about and wild card. It creates more interest, more teams stay in the hunt the longer, so you get more people in here at the ballpark. And when you have playoffs and World Series, that also those are big revenue generators, both Certainly. for the sport, for the players. For the TV networks for everybody. I could get rid of the wild card and just have the, the top winners. And you know what? If like in night ball four right there, which is another walk. Uh, Second walk given up by DeGrom as Jeanette is aboard. So, you know, Eddie's argument is that he believes 162 game season yeah. is a far better measure of there's success no, there's than no, a short series. There's no question about that. Uh, but. Um, anything can happen in a short series, and uh, like I said, I can do without the wild card. It gets the World Series into November where it's freezing. It's not baseball weather. You know what? In 80, what was it, 85? Our, your Metropolitans. 98 wins. 98 wins and go home. Hang with them. How about the 1993 San Francisco Giants who won 103 and went home? Yep. That was the last year before the wild card became instituted. I understand his point. Um, Postseason series tend to be crapshoots, right? They they depend on who's the hot team, who has the hot pitcher, who's healthier. That's driven to center by Luke Croy, easing back is Cespedes. Tagging at first Jeanette, but he's not going to challenge Cespedes' arm. Uenis <laughs> threw it on the fly to second base, two out. You know, even though your 69 Mets uh, want to 100 games. Right. Uh, to me, they were the true miracle Mets. Uh, there never would have been that series with Baltimore when they had the four. What they had the, the uh, 20 game winners. Who would have thought they would have toppled the Orioles? Baltimore won 109 that year. Yep. So I see what he, uh, what, uh, what Eddie's saying. So he wants to go back to the old form. He's being old school, basically. You know that. Well, here's the thing: if you win your division. Or if you win your league, even if you don't win the World Series, you still are champion of the division, champion of the league. Yeah, but so you get a smaller piece of the pie. Can I say this on the air? It's like kissing your sister. You, you know, don't, you don't have a sister. Well, <laughs> I can say that on the air, can I? You just did. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That was there was the old saying in hockey, right? This, when they used to have ties. Yes, hockey. right. So um, if you win your division and don't win the, the league, you know it's like us in '88. We got beat by the Dodgers. See what they do in college basketball, right? They play the whole year and then they have a conference tournament, mm -hmm. and so you have two champions: you have the regular season champion and the tournament champion. And that's and that's all revenue too. Line to center, Cespedes is coming on. He has to short hop it. Jeanette stops a second the throw behind him and he gets back safely. So Carter hitting one just in front of the onrushing Cespedes. And very nice to see Cespedes use his glove on this one. <laughs> yes. you know, he's very good at charging and keeping the ball in front of him. He is very adept at that. You know, this that ball gets by him, you know, that's trouble. Yeah, course, one ball get by him at Harvey's start the other night. Yep. But that doesn't happen often. So two out and two on some hard hit balls against DeGrom and here is Neuenheis who took a call third strike his first time. Jeanette at second Carter at first with two out. And Neuenheis gets jammed and fouls it off. But it's food for thought right and that's yes. that's why we have Eddie says. Well that's the beauty of baseball is that you've got all this we're up here watching the same game you're watching out there folks and you have the same conversations about the game in between pitches and that's the beauty of baseball. I'm um, just not able to find himself right now. It's lonely out there. He's going to surge though he's not going to you're going to get him he's you're going to have to earn it. 
And that one by New and Heist, one and two. See, a lot of his fastballs are belt high, Garrett, where the last first two years as a Met, he was on the knees all the time. Well, a guy like New and Heist, you got to work upstairs. Yeah. He's aware of it, too. It's, he's, he's working at it. One, two. And the curveball got him to wave at it, strike three. And so DeGrom gets around trouble in the third with his fifth strikeout. Still two to one. Saturday afternoon in New York no rain which is a, a big plus after some ominous forecasts yesterday the weatherman amending the forecast quite favorably well, where it's in the area but it's not here Jacob DeGrom leads off against Zach Davies in the home third DeGrom got his First hit of the season in Colorado in his last start. And now he's still, he's one of the few looking for his first home run. He can swing the bat too. The Mets have some hitters in their starting rotation. And Davies falls behind him 2 0. Davies gave up a home run and a double in the first inning, but got the lead, pitched a 1 2 3 second. Granderson and right to follow. And DeGrom grounds one down to first. Carter handles it. Very nonchalant flip for the first out. So, Buck Showalter, Curtis Granderson steps out, hit the uh, solo home run. Buck Showalter was very, very high on, on Davis, did not want to give him up, but I guess was overruled. He was traded for a rental. They got two months of Gerardo Parra, who's now in Colorado. The Orioles did. First pitch curveball to Granderson, ball one. You were asking about leadoff home runs, by the way, Keith, after Granderson hit the one in the first inning. Ricky Henderson had 81 wow. leadoff home runs, which remains the record. Where is uh, Bobby Bonds on that list? Because I remember when I was growing up as a kid, it was Bobby Bonds that was the leader for a long time, if I recall. Get our, uh, Not Barry, Barry's father, Bobby. Popped up. Long run. Hill trying to get over, and he oh. stays with it. Nice play by Aaron Hill. That was not an easy play. He was playing far off the line in the shift against Granderson. And it was a long way to go. Got some wind here today, too, blowing. It's blowing, it looks like it's blowing out to left field today. And there it is. So it is blowing west. Westerly direction. 
So two out and nobody on. Now David Wright, who was called out on strikes his first time up. Well, Zach Davies got off to a yeah. dreadful start to his season, but lately much better. Yeah, his May has been a lot better. And he got a win. They said three starts in each month. Got his win in his fifth start. And they said his last start was his best start of the year. That was against San Diego, a no decision game for him. David chasing that change up, and it's one and two. And it's trying something different with David this weekend. Gave him the night game off last night. Plan to play him in the day games today and tomorrow. Well, is this really a day game? You know, the nine at the four o'clock start is kind of it's in between, but I still consider it a day game. You differ. Well, it is a day game. Technically. The way I look at it is that we're going to get home instead of at midnight, we're going to get home around nine o'clock. In the air to right field. Flores with plenty of room. And that retires the side. Davies has now retired eight in a row after three, two to one Milwaukee. Milwaukee as Jacob DeGrom takes the mound for the fourth inning. Let's head down to Steve Gelbs, who's tracking last night's Mets starter. Yeah, Gary, we did it last year with John Neese as well. Just trying to take a look at what Steven Matz does in between starts. And, and let's start with what he did last night immediately coming out of a game. And this is his routine no matter what the start is. He comes out, goes into the clubhouse, and he does the arm bike. Forwards for four minutes, then backwards for four minutes, then gets on the regular bike bikes a little bit while drinking a protein shake <laughs> then he rolls out with a foam roller and that's pretty much the basics of what he does once he is pulled out of a game now the one thing that Matt's does change though is uh, is what he does based on what happens in the game itself so last night he was able to work out his shoulders a little bit more because he only got 88 pitches in so felt he had some room to grow in that regard and finally this is interesting specific to last night he normally does not ice his arm immediately after a start Yesterday he did that though just based on what he was coming off of with the elbow injury 10 days earlier. All right, here's the part that I don't really understand and maybe you can enlighten us and, and the, the folks listening Steve. I just worked for uh, for two hours throwing 88 pitches and, and expending all that energy. Why does he when he gets in the clubhouse do the arm bike and, and the regular bike. What What's the point of that. Well the, the way that he kind of described it in terms of the arm bike is he just tries to keep everything loose at that point still um, you know I'm not really sure what the the full point of the bicycle is and I mean maybe Keith can even enlighten it as a former pro athlete but you know he just talked about keeping the body moving immediately after coming out of the game uh, is something that, that he does and I know a lot of these guys do that as well. 
Well, I, you know, I, I've never was a pitcher on a on a, on a professional level, um, but sooner I maybe he just wants to just stay warm and gear down. That's a very surprising third walk right there issued by uh, uh, Degrom. Uh, I mean, he knows what's best for him, uh, so whatever works. Uh, I didn't do anything after a game. I just relaxed. Showered, went home. And you know, I, I think Gary too. It's all part of just the recovery as well. I mean, it's pretty grueling what he does for those previous two and a half hours. So making sure that nothing tightens up and everything does stay loose moving forward. Mm. Presley rips one into right field. Hill will go first to third, and Degrom has found trouble again here in the fourth inning. A walk and a hard hit single for Presley, first and third, and nobody out. Well, that's the one ball he got down in this inning. And it's to a left hand hitter and he's got too much plate here. You can see Polwecki set up outside and anytime you throw middle in and down to a left hand hitter that's into their strength. I like that shirt that Steve's sporting a little all white shirt looks nice. Especially with the blazer, looks uh, looks, looks very, very nice. Very nice look for him. Yeah, I uh, I was inspired, guys. <laughs> I was inspired by the two men in the booth. You're my inspiration every day. That's an inside joke, folks. <laughs> folks. Well, here's Ramon Flores, who made some personal history his last time up, his first big league home run, <laughs> and he gets a first pitch curveball for a strike. Mets are playing back, conceding the run. David Wright's the only one in. He's at the cut of the grass at third base. They're going to concede, turn the double play, stay out of a big inning. Got the pitcher on deck, so this is a big batter for DeGrom. <clears throat> Two curveballs in a row, and a ball and a strike to Flores. Well, twice in the last three days, Terry Collins has had to spend a ton of bullpen. Bartolo Colon got knocked out in the fifth on Wednesday night. Matt Harvey got knocked out in the third on Thursday night. And DeGrom with a very high pitch count early in this game. Flores reaches and hits one out to left. That'll get the run in. Hill tags at third. Conforto makes the grab. His throw will go to second. As Hill comes home with the third Milwaukee run. All driven in by the number eight hitter Ramon Flores. And it's now three to one Milwaukee. Well done. I mean you never know in today's game. There's so many hitters that you see that strike out in a situation like this. Runner on third base. Less than two outs. Sacrifice fly. Get a run in. So well done. And another pitch up here. That fastball's belt high. And Davies showing bunt and takes a strike. So just to get back to uh, to the Matt's post game routine for a moment, Keith. When you were playing, were there any players who did work after games? Or was that just something that nobody did in those days? Well, the weightlifting and the bunts on here, and a beautiful bunt. Campbell bare handing and makes the play to Walker. 3 4 on the sacrifice, moving Presley to second. That's as good as it gets right there. Talk about deadening the ball. End of the bat? Yes. You can't go very far when you get out the end of the bat like that. Right down the line. Weightlifting, Gary, back to your question. Um, didn't come in till later in my career. It was always scorned, uh, scorned upon. I used to do all the hand grips, and um, I had a a weight attached to a round broom, broom handle. Broom handle. So yes, and I would have my elbows. Oh, wild pitch! That'll get Presley over to third. So this is very uncharacteristic of DeGrom here. He's searching to find his old form. So I used to have stiff elbows, stiff arm, and I would roll it down all the way to the ground almost one way and roll it up the other. And that was for the forearms and wrists. And that's basically what I, could, I did. And I, sh I could have done triceps, I'm sure. You're talking about post game. Oh, period. I'm talking about you. Ta you're asking me if I did anything post game. No, I'm wondering if, if anybody later in my post career. Yes, when it came in, yeah. I mean, I never would have wanted to 
I didn't work out before a game. I didn't want to lift anything before a game. <clears throat> I, I, I would do a quick lift with Keith Cedro after the game, because then I'd have all night to recoup. And then we'd get it done real quick, just basic stuff. Get the heck out of there. I didn't want to hang around. But that's back in shame. It took you an hour to get out of the ballpark. First guy I heard about who got on the bike after games was Nolan Ryan. He used to do that all the time, especially later in his career. Broken bat looper, and that's going to fall for a base hit, and that'll bring in another run. Jonathan VR broke his back, but dumped it into left field. And Presley comes in to make it 4 to 1 Milwaukee. Well, the Brewers playing like a first division team, getting it done this inning. Got the men on base, got the, uh, the sacrifice fly, got the sacrifice bunt from the pitcher, and then the base hit. So it all started with a leadoff walk by DeGrom. Two runs have now scored, and now Scooter Jeanette with two out and a runner at first. That bullpen is quiet to this point. But DeGrom now up to 84, and he nearly picked VR off first. So we'll see how young Jacob here works his way through this. Here's the pickoff. I don't think he had any real intent just to hold him close. Uh, had a big lead. Almost got him. Well, VR is a base dealer. In fact, he leads the National League in steals right now with 14. Had one last night. Hmm. Well, that's another swing and a miss from Jeanette. That's four. Goodness. He's got a big uppercut. Can't hit that ball above his waist. Jeanette has struck out and walked tonight 0 for 1. There goes VR. And it's a foul ball. So VR will go back. He's almost out of the left field. Now the Brewers have stolen more bases than any team in the National League, led by VR, who has nearly half of their steal. It's caught six times. O2 to Jeanette. Hmm. And he pops one up into shallow right. Granderson coming on. And that retires the side, but not before the Brewers attack on a pair. Rough afternoon so far for Jacob DeGrom. That's down four to one in the fourth. metropolitan city, a city of boroughs, a city of buildings, a city of bridges, but above all, a city of sports fans with fierce loyalties. 
fans from all of the boroughs who have found a new love in baseball, the Mets. And you can read all about it in Jimmy Olsen's column in the Daily Planet. <laughs> who was the voiceover there? <laughs> Fantastic. Know. Sounded very Superman-esque. He knew how to pause and... Terrific. That, uh, that's from the archives from 1962, the first year of Mets baseball. And when the Mets were a shiny new coin playing in a decrepit old ballpark in Upper Manhattan. Oh. At the Polo Grounds for the first two years. Coogan's Bluff. Remember that Clint Eastwood movie? No. Yes, it was a terrific movie. Um, he played the. Arizona or Western Sheriff coming to get a criminal out of out of the Bronx. It was one of Clint's uh, first movies after the Spaghetti Westerns. It was fabulous. It was a terrific uh, detective film. I have to check that one out. Oh, you must. Michael Conforto doubled his first time up. He gets tied up by Davies. Zach Davies now working with a three run lead. He's retired the last eight since Conforto's double in the first. And the curveball fouled off. Today's high speed pitch comes from the New York Lottery. Take a break from the expected. Well, DeGrom's velocity has not been the issue today. Right. Velocity's up, but his efficiency is down. Three walks, too. Very, very uncharacteristic. And two of those three walks have scored. And while the baby faced Davies. Just misses inside and the full count to Conforto. They've got baby face Davies and then they've got on their staff Jimmy Nelson. So if they combine them, you could have baby face Nelson. You're very good. Right into the shift and Jeanette is there to field it. Ripped. Another hard smash off the bat of Conforto. So that's nine straight retired by Davies. He struck out Cespedes his first time up. Mets offense has been a quandary. Lots of home runs. Not much else. And right now, coming into this game, the Mets have scored 16 runs in their last eight games. Two and six over those eight games. A little bloop into shallow right, and Flores will watch it dunk in front of him. And Cespedes has himself a blue pit. The Mets' third hit of the day after Davies had retired nine in a row. Well the Mets until the road trip out west were just tearing it up offensively and they've hit a little skid here got in on them a little bit there. And it's, a, it's a game of uh, ebbs and flows as walking into our said you never know. Well let's go back to one of the things we talked about earlier when a few weeks ago when the Mets were scoring lots of runs hitting lots of home runs we talked about whether you could have an offense that was so predicated on the home run could that right go into slumps and here we are at a point in the season when the Mets are hitting the odd home run here and there but they're really not scoring runs in other ways and I guess the question is if you're going to have as low a walk rate as the Mets have and have as low a batting average with runners and scoring position as they have, can you win with just the home run ball? Or then the way to look at it is that it's just, the, you know, the runners in scoring position are down right now. Obviously, they're not hitting in the clutch. Is it just a period you're going through? Um, Cespedes will move up the base on the curveball in the dirt. Do you really think that uh, when Sandy put this team together, and we'll take a look here at this, it's got to be a wild pitch. Look at Croy get, oh boy, came up and got him. 
that off the plate. Yep. You really think that Sandy felt that this team, at constructed as it is, was a team that was going to rely solely on home runs, Gary? I, I don't, I don't think, think so. That's, I, I think that the way the Mets were constructed offensively is very much in the way Sandy wants to construct the team as Walker strikes out on the changeup. Is he wants a team with a high walk rate and a lot of home runs? I think that those are his offensive theories: right. walks and home runs. And this year they've had the home runs, but not the walks. And if you also add in the fact that they're not getting hits when they have put runners on base, they haven't had those big hits to drive in runs. That's why they're 12th in the league in runs scored. Well, see, I'm always as a player, I look at the season in segments, and they got off to the hot start, and everybody's going, "Oh my gosh, they're hitting, they're hitting this and that, and hitting home runs." And now you can't you can't go at that pace in 162. It's got to have a little period where you get, you struggle, and you hope it doesn't happen uh, to your big bats together, let alone your entire team go into the tank <coughs> um, offensively. But they're going to come out of it. There's too many professional hitters in this ball club. I mean, Granderson, would you have said Granderson would be hitting under 200? That's pulled through the hole by Cabrera. Cespedes around third heading home. The throw to the plate by Flores, not in time. There's a big two-out RBI hit as Dribble Cabrera drives in a run. And cuts the Milwaukee lead to 4-2. To well, Cabrera continues to shine and impress. He's been in the middle of a lot of things. He's kind of like the unsung hero, the guy under the radar. He's getting the hits. He's in the middle of innings, getting it started, driving it in. Two outs here on contact. Cespedes can fly, so that's an easy automatic. It's a strong throw home by Flores here, and he hit the cutoff, man. But not even close. So the wild pitch helps produce a run. Fastball away, belt high. Goes out and gets it and pulls it in the hole. Campbell takes side. Good balance. Nice swing. Nothing wrong with that. The one further question I would ask you in regards to the Mets offense is from what you've been watching. They hit a lot of home runs early. Do you feel as though these Mets hitters as a group have gotten too wrapped up in hitting home runs and it's affected their ability to identify pitches out of the strike zone and not chase, cut down their swings with two strikes, with two outs to drive in runs? Uh, they've gotten a little too home run happy. That's it to the second baseman. I'll let you answer that when we come back from break. Okay. Okay. Campbell grounds out. Mets get a run on a two out hit by Cabrera. 4 2 Milwaukee after four.
DirecTV Premium. Watch every out-of-market game live in HD on over 400 supported devices. MLB.TV Premium includes a free subscription to at bat premium. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.TV for details. Fifth inning, 4-2 to two, Milwaukee on bucket hat day at the ballpark. Jonathan Lucroy pops up the first pitch from Jacob DeGrom. And Walker is there to grab it. One pitch and one out. That's upcoming schedule brought to you by ChevyOffers.com. And some Brewers play again tomorrow here on Picks 11. Then the Mets go to D.C. for three more with the Nats before returning home to play the Dodgers for three and the White Sox for three on the next homestand. Here's Chris Carter is one for two at a base at his last time up. Rob could certainly use more of those one pitch outs. He's had a heavy workload early in this game. And this ball one. Let's go back to where we were talking about the <clears> last <throat> half inning. Do you see a Mets offense that's become a little too home run happy? Well, I've always said that the home run is very seductive to hitters, and maybe so. They were hitting it at an incredible pace. Uh, that's why it helped them get off to the hot start. But remember, Gary, when we started this season, we were looking at the schedule. Mm -hmm. The first 20 games. 18 of them were against second division teams. And I think that had a lot to do with it. And that we, we were mentioning how, gosh, they, they can get off to a hot start with this schedule in April. Then, you know, you start playing the Giants. You start playing the Dodgers, the better pitching staffs. And if you get into that rut of home runs and you start pacing, uh, facing a, a better caliber of pitching, you better make the adjustment. To me, what was alarming was going into Coors Field and seeing the Mets yes. score nine runs in three games. That was the only thing. I mean, they, they, we mentioned it in a, a previous broadcast. I mean, they got good pitching in the Dodgers series. Uh, San Diego was a bit of a surprise. Um, they're not that grand. But Colorado is where you really want to go in as an offense and beef up. Carter foul tips it for strike three. Strike out number six for DeGrom. Change up looks like. Yep. And it's up. You don't want to get a change up. He was on that one. Just got under it. Decay. <laughs> Two of those against New and Heist today. And Kirk has looked a little overmatched in these at bats so <laughs> far. You know, I said as I don't want to get a change up up because when you get a change up up and you and the hitter waits like Carter did there, I always had a good look at it when it was right there on it. It's almost like it's on a tee. You want to get that change up, preferably sinking away from the hitter and down to get him to roll it over, pull it. When you get it up, boy, he can lose it. You'd be rubbing up a new one in a heartbeat. Approaching 100 pitches with two out of the fifth inning. Bullpen is quiet to this point. There it is. See right there. Beautiful. That's a sinking change. Outside corner watch. Beautiful. This is where he wants to do it, a left-hand hitter. Outer half of the plate, tantalizing, and it sinks down away. And all you can do is roll it over. Hasn't thrown more than 103 pitches in a start this year. Pitch number 100 upcoming to Newenheis. And he got him. Mm. Third time he struck out Kirk. Seven strikeouts for DeGrom. Slider takes care of Newenheis. Halfway through, 4 to 2 Milwaukee.
I, I would want it to go with the Melvin Upton walk off home run against the Dodgers but the truck overruled me and so we're showing you the cow milking contest in Anaheim last night which was won by Orioles reliever Dylan Bundy by pumping the most milk in five minutes he won a cheese. How big a cheese I don't know but he's a big cheese and it was <laughs> it was dairy night dairy night you know they used to have the cow milking contest at, uh, at Shea Stadium but I remember that's a long time ago I remember didn't you used to have a goat here too or no well the the, the mule yeah okay. metal the mule that was uh, one of the short live mascots and uh, Ploiecki knocks over Luke Roy with his broken bat as the ball goes foul Luke Roy appears to be OK in the fraternity of catchers Ploiecki making sure he's OK. At least the bat got sawed off. That's what happened. Oh, the umpire got it too. Got it worse. Adrian Johnson, the home plate umpire. That was a twofer. That's a saw off right there. Oh, and that just the sharp point could have got Adrian Johnson. So Ploiecki doing a lot of damage there. But everybody's okay. Alejandro Diaz is out on deck to bat for DeGrom, so it looks like his day is over. Hansel Robles is up in the Mets bullpen. Lewecki hit a comebacker his first time up. So about the Melvin Upton walk-off home run, the Dodger bullpen had been struggling except for their closer, Kenley Jansen. And he gave it up. He gave it up last night, his first blown save. Padres beat the Dodgers 7-6. And uh, the Dodgers are now under 500 for the season. Whoever three hundred million dollar payroll. That Western Division, they better whoever whoever is going to go forward in the playoffs, they better win that division because there's no wild card out coming out of the West. Giants had won eight in a row till they granted Jake Arrieta last night. That's yanked foul. Arrieta, just a typical performance. He was very disappointed with his performance. What did he do? Seven innings. One run, four hits, eight strikeouts. He's won 19 straight decisions. The Cubs have won the last 22 times he started, not counting the postseason. And he got a base hit, too, in that game. Slowly hit. Hill comes in to get it. And it goes out. Galecki went away. The, uh, the downside for the Cubs in that win last night was Jason Hayward injuring himself making a spectacular catch in the first yes. inning. Went head first into the fence. He came up holding his side. They called it a torso abdominal injury. I haven't seen anything further on the severity of it, but it didn't look good. So here's Deaza batting for DeGrom. Very interesting. Disappointing outing for Jake. He threw 100 pitches, so he's done after five innings. So the three walks were his demise here and pitched a lot from behind. And that's why the through four innings of five innings excuse me the hundred pitches. Walk three struck out seven gave up four runs and five hits including a home run to Ramon Flores and that put a big crimp in his day. Diaz has had base hits each of his last two pinch hitting appearances. Grom's ERA goes up to 3.07 for the year. I mean, Diaz is kind of in a tough spot here. I'm sure he's happy to be in the big leagues. He's happy to be in the ball club that's going to be in contention. Great potential to go postseason, but he's really the only left hand hitter on the bench when everybody's healthy. And he's not going to get an opportunity to play a lot. Start. to the Deaza and it trickles away he did not swing two and two
Seventh pitch of the at bat to Deaza, and it's inside. And he works the count full. These at bats have been much better for Deaza the last few days. Curtis Granderson is already homeward today, waiting on deck. That's trying to fight back against Zach Davies. The rookie right hander has looked good so far today. And Deaza shoots nice. one down the left field line. Just foul. And that's nice hitting right there. You got a sinker ball pitcher, doesn't want to walk. He's nursing a, a two run lead in the middle of the game. His bread and butter is his sinker to a left hand hitter. So, you know, if you're Diazza, no one's on base, you're not going to hit a home. You're not a home run hitter. Get the rally started. It's nice hitting. It just foul. Sinker down and away, went right with it. Davies has kept his pitch count low. Deaza running it up. And there's ball four. A terrific turn at bat for Deaza. So he's reached base now three straight times as a pinch hitter. First walk given up by Davies. There's Craig Council, who is in his first full season as Brewers manager. Took over 25 games into last year from Ron Renneke. They're in a rebuild in Milwaukee, and they are not shy about talking about it. They have really retooled their farm system. And they're kind of biding their time for a year or two from now when they expect to be a lot better. There's Granderson who led off the first inning with a home run, tying run at the plate in a 4 2 game. First time Davies has really slowed down the pace today. And he misses away. Ball one. Well, second pitch Davies threw today disappeared off nope. the bat of Granderson. And he remembers that because he gives one up here. It's a tie ball game. It's interesting how pitchers handle this. Third time through the order. Second time up, Granderson fouled out. And the fastball catches the corner one and one. Zach Davies made his big league debut for the Brewers last year. Made six starts for them down the stretch of the season. Pitched well, but began this year in the minors. Wasn't called up till April 17th. First three starts dreadful. Last three starts very good. And a check swing grounder down to Carter. Gets the out at first. The throw to mm. second, and he gets the double play. A bad slide by Deaza, and he gets tagged out for the 3 3 6 double play. And that's how the inning comes to an end. A little better slide by Deazi might have been safe. Still four to two Milwaukee.
Let's trail the Brewers four to two. Hansel Robles in on relief, on in relief, I should say, of Jacob Degrom. And in case you're just joining us, we were speaking earlier about Stephen Matz. We're going to be following him each and every day in between his starts to see what he does individually each day. And uh, we spoke about his last night earlier today. Uh, this is what he does a little bit differently. Now he comes in uh, 1040 a.m. today, so about five and a half hours before the start of the game. And the day after his starts is mainly about cardio and about working out his lower body on the cardio side he actually changed things up a little bit this year used to run for about a half an hour on the treadmill now he does run for a half an hour but he does it using interval training so that's something new that the Mets have really added all around they get their guys heart rate monitors try and make sure that they're taking full advantage of, of these half hours by doing the interval training then in terms of working out his lower body that's something that he developed when he was in the minor leagues the Mets teach all their young pitchers to do the lower body on the first day after the starts and for Steven Matz the reason he likes that the most is that generally for him he's actually not sore on the lower body end the day after his starts it's more the upper body that is sore for him so he gets the lower body work out of the way and then moves forward with his routine the rest of the week. Gar? Well that makes sense because the pitchers have to run and their legs are in shape. So they can get the you know throw seven eight innings whatever 100 pitches in today's game. So it's not surprising that. The upper body would be the. The sore part because that's getting all the work. Well the legs are too but that legs are in sh it's a different kind of work. And the interval training that's that's really a revolution in <coughs> in in. The whole. Methodology of, of workouts. <coughs> That uh, running for long periods of time at a steady pace is out, and short bursts of right. full effort is in. Aaron Hill walks for the third time today. Degrom walked him twice, and now Robles walks him, leading off in the sixth. And Garrett Keith, something else that is worth noting with Stephen Matz the day after his starts, because so much with Matz is about maintaining his health, especially this season. He's added a massage to his day. As soon as he's done with his workout, he does get that arm massage the day after his starts by Yoshi. That's something he did not do last year. And you speak with Matt, so much of this season is just about trying to find a way to stop those nagging injuries. You know, I find it really kind of funny, uh, Steve, that I never got a massage, never thought to get a massage. George Hendrick, my teammate, probably one of the best right fielders I've ever played with, um, would go we didn't make the money these guys made he would get a massage in the hotels on the road and I, I never I never thought of doing that so I find it kind of funny that they now these teams have the masseuse which I think is great uh, I would have taken advantage of it if I was if it was around in my playing day also Steve uh, you know, pursuant to the idea of Matt's goal of keeping healthy this year we talked about it during the game last night the fact that he he threw his slider maybe what two or three times all night and we were wondering whether that was in deference to the the elbow issues that he had experienced in his prior start. Now did you talk to him about that today. Yeah Gary I did and, and you were spot on when you mentioned that he was thinking about it talking a little bit with Dan more than basically it's a pitch that puts so much strain on the forearm they basically decided not to risk it and Steven said moving forward he's really going to focus more on using the curveball and the change up and shy away from heavy usage with that slider. Well what I noticed last night in his start and that set everything up uh, Steve Gary was. He throws his fastball and he locates and he pitches aggressively inside and last night he was on both corners of the plate and that set up his secondary pitches. Meanwhile, Robles struggling with his command of his fastball and he's gone full on Alex Presley after walking Aaron Hill. This is a game that is uh, is right there for the Mets but. Robles with an uneven beginning to his outing. I got to believe the runners in motion here. Presley one for two today. Hill is running and Presley strikes out. Ploiecki's throw on a hop is not in time. And Hill has his third stolen base of the year. So Presley strikes out for the first out. Now a runner in scoring position with one away.
Almost a strike him out, throw him out. Pawecki gets rid of the ball quick, but he has a hard time reaching it on a fly. If he can just get that arm a little stronger, I love his release, but that's just a very good jump by Hill. He stole that one easily. Last night, Rene Rivera caught, and uh, boy, he makes your eyes pop how strong his arm is throughout. Hernan Perez trying to steal last night. Here's Ramon Flores, who's had a big day. His first major league home run and a sacrifice fly has driven in three of the four Milwaukee runs. He pops this one up in foul ground. Right over near the railing and too far. Hill at second and one out. And Flores takes inside. Well, this was back in the second inning, a big moment for Ramon Flores. First home run of his career, high fastball out over the plate. Nice cut on it. Came into the game hitting 190. Home run came in his 113th big league at bat. Two and one to Flores. Robles hasn't worked since Wednesday night when he pitched an inning in the third against Washington. He actually was called upon in the fifth inning of that game when Cologne got knocked out early. He threw that one by him. Rom went five. He allowed four runs, five hits, three walks, seven strikeouts, through 100 pitches in five innings, which prompted the early call for the bullpen. Mets bullpen with the best ERA of any bullpen in the major leagues so far this year. Check swing foul. Mets bullpen came in to the day with a mark of 2.44. Three and four record, 15. Of 18 save opportunities. Last night, Addison Reed had a perfect eighth. Jerry's familiar, a perfect ninth. Day before against Washington, the bullpen had to supply six in the third innings after Harvey got knocked out early and they didn't allow a run. 2 2 coming, and Flores fouls off the slider. <laughs> And Braun sitting out the first two games of this series also missed the last game of the Brewers series with the Cubs because his back is acted up he had back surgery in the offseason. That's a back issues of their own to deal with David Wright and now Lucas Duda. And Robles throws one by Flores back to back strikeouts for Hansel two away. Well, Hansel's going to come after you. Got a good arm, good live arm. You're going to get up off him. You're going to get, if you get six pitches, five are going to be fastballs. Minimum four. So two out. Hill still at second. Now the pitcher Davies, who has struck out and sacrificed 0 for 1. If you missed it earlier, Lucas Duda was in the lineup today, had to be scratched. Saw the doctor, had an MRI done. No word on exactly what they found. So Davies pops it up, and it looks like he'll probably sit tomorrow, and he might be a candidate for the DL. We'll see. Robles works around the leadoff walk. David Wright will get a turn at bat for the Mets as we go to the bottom of the sixth. Mets trying to fight back from a 4 to 2 deficit at City Field.
I'm Odell shop Odell Sporting Goods your fan gear headquarters come on Met fans you got to go to Moe's. And there are some of the Met fans gathered today on a cloudy Saturday late afternoon. Bucket hats on their heads. Honda out of town scoreboard Williams Perez on his birthday goes six and a third scoreless innings for the Braves. They lead the Phillies two nothing in the ninth. The Cardinals who have been uh, scuffling lead three nothing over the Diamondbacks in the seventh. And you see the later games Joe Ross. For the Nationals will face Jose Fernandez and the Marlins tonight in Miami. Start something special with a great deal on a Honda. David right up for the third time and mm. takes a curveball strike from Zach Davies. Well you're right about the Cardinals they are 22 and 20 the Cubs are just blistering their eight games back. I mean the Cubs are really threatening. They keep it up to just run away with that division. Did you see the outing for the Pirates Garrett Cole last night. It was bizarre. You know Cole's power pitcher right. Went seven innings. He have up only one run on ten hits and no strikeouts, and won the game two to one over Colorado. He got off to a, a tough yeah. start. Very too. He hasn't been the same this year as he was last. By the way, we were talking about uh, Jason Hayward before. There's good news for the Cubs on that. He's diagnosed with a contusion in his rib area. And they're saying he'll be out three to five days and he should be fine. That's good news. Well, horrific last night when he dove into the fence. Fastball misses inside to right two and two. Michael Conforto on deck, then he went to Cespedes. Third time around the batting order against Zach Davies. He's given up just two runs and four hits over the first five innings. And it's on the outside corner, and Davis caught looking for the second time today. Five strikeouts for Davies. And that is 50 strikeouts for David Wright in his first 120 at bat. He's getting struck out, Gary, on a lot of pitches on the outside corner. That's borderline right there. Too close to take. So one out and nobody on now. Michael Conforto and. Uh, Adrian Johnson the home plate umpire appears to have thrown out Kevin Long the Mets hitting coach and Kevin's going to head toward the tunnel. So Long defending David Wright on a pitch that appeared to be a little outside and he took the heat for him. And so it appears Kevin Long has been ejected. Well you know the one thing with David right now and that pitch was you know two inches off the plate and it's it's close and the pitcher got the call. But the point I want to make is that if David's right on it never gets this deep in the count David's out of the box he's had a couple pitches to hit and he's been not it just missed and it, the pitcher got the call. You got to write the moan and groan there. But my point is if David's on that that doesn't go that deep in that count right. He's out of the box. Third pitch, fourth pitch. Three and zero to Conforto, and he takes ball four. Second walk given up by Davies, and that'll get Cespedes to the plate as the tying run. And that's something you don't want to do. They're nursing a two-run lead. Brewers have their bullpen cooking, even with Davies only at 80 pitches. Cespedes at a blue pitch to right field his last time up and scored a run. He's one for two on the day. Lane Boyer, briefly a former Met, up in the bullpen. So nice at bat by Conforto. You got no one on base. You're table setting for your power hitters and your big boy right here in Cespedes. Rounded down to third. That's a foul ball. 
Third base umpire Jim Wolf making the call. Hill making the throw just in case. And the correct one. Going to go fastball away. They're going to keep the ball away, not give him anything he can hit out of the ballpark. Luke Roy barking out at Davies after he missed his location. Yeah, words of encouragement. It's, this is a big at bat here. This is the one bat in the lineup you got to be careful with more than anybody else. Sixth inning last night was where the Mets turned the game around on Conforto's two run homer. Fastball in. Cespedes takes inside two and one. You tell him to keep that shoulder in, that front shoulder in, fastball away. Cespedes, mm. the wild cut. Two and two. And he's got that pitch up. He's overthrowing this at bat. He's charged up here facing Cespedes. He wants the ball down and away, and it's middle and up. Not Cespedes' best swing. Got it by him a little bit, didn't he? He might have dialed it up a notch. Now it's two and two to Uenis. He launches one deep down the left field line, hooking toward the corner. It's out of here! Yoannis Cespedes ties the game with a two-run homer. Nobody hits off-speed pitches for home runs like this guy. Well. He's clutching out. He is something else. And I don't know where this club would be if they didn't resign. And it's a change up, and that is a foolish pitch. I never like to good hitters with two strikes do not like the off speed pitch. Well, last night it was Michael Conforto's two on homer in the sixth that gave the Mets the lead. Today it's Yoannis Cespedes' two on homer in the sixth. That ties up the game and knocks Zach Davies out. Call to the bullpen brought to you by Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center. 4 4 in the sixth. We'll be right back.
Change up with two strikes out in front. Let's go to one hand. And how many times have we seen that, Gary? He wrapped it around a foul pole, as Frank Howard would say. He's got 14 home runs this year. Blaine Boyer on to pitch now, and he gets the curveball over for a strike. 14 home runs. How many have come on fastballs? What, two or three? You've seen more games than I mean, me. It, has, it seems as though it's always a curveball, a changeup. He's just got the knack. That's hit the other way, and Walker's got a base hit. So Walker greets the Met for a minute, Blaine Boyer with a base hit. And here's the pitch sequence. There's a fastball down and away, 0 and 1. Up fastball, 1 and 1. Inside sinker, belt high, 2 and 1. Goes after a high hard one, 2 and 2. There's the changer. And I just don't, like I said, the good hitters stay away from that off speed stuff with two strikes. They're good hitters because they're good two strike hitters. 14 home runs for Cespedes ties him with Nolan Arenado for the major league lead. Now here's Cabrera with the go ahead run at first and one out. So Davies goes five and a third allows four runs five hits two walks five strikeouts and the two home runs. A no decision game for him. Well the home run got him and he'll kick himself for walking Conforto. Cabrera drove in the second Met run with a two out hit in the fourth. And he pops this one up. Carter and Lucroy looking for it, and Lucroy mm. staggers but stays with it for the second out. So, two out now, Eric Campbell, who's 0 for 2. Campbell was a late addition to the lineup today when Lucas Duda was scratched. Because of his ongoing back issues. When Lucas is going to be able to play again, whether he's going to need to go on the disabled list, exactly what the nature is of this back problem, all to be determined. Campbell hits mm. one toward the middle. That is through for a base hit. So Aaron Campbell first pitch swinging moves the lead run to second base. Well Campbell's in a you know getting a chance to play. I like him off the bench. I like his versatility as far as the infield's concerned. And he stays within himself Gary. He's not a power hitter. He's a big guy that's going to keep the line running. Third hit of the inning. And now with two on and two out in the tie game, Kevin Ploiecki will bat. Ploiecki is 0 for 2. Juan Lagares has come out on deck. He'll pinch hit if Ploiecki can keep the inning going. Ploiecki had a really good road trip, but just 1 for 12 on this homestand. And he takes the curveball from Boyer for a strike. God, Boyer's just throwing that little lazy old breaking ball up there. Ooh. Boyer's now 34 years old. He resurrected his career in Minnesota last year and he's had a good season so far for the Brewers. Gets it in on the fists of Ploiecki and it's 0 and 2. Well there you go four home runs of the 14 he's hit have come on fastball. And that seems like a pretty low percentage for a power hit. So yeah 10 with the secondary stuff. Four on changeups three on curveballs. Yeah. And. You know that's all on the scouting reports. Yeah, it's got to be. <laughs> they see it on video. Slowly hit. Hill comes in and throws out Ploiecki to end the inning. But the Mets get even in the bottom of the sixth on Cespedes' two-run homer. Number 14 of the year for the Mets slugger. And the Mets get even. Get to Grom off the hook. 4-4 going to the seventh.
Mets were up one nothing down four to one scratched out a run in the fourth got a suspicious bomb in the sixth to get back even as we head for the seventh. They're playing Elvis Costello on the PA. I know I pump I, it up. I, that's you. You love it. Oh. Heaven. Lots of Robles worked around a leadoff walk in the sixth struck out a pair. He'll stay on for the seventh. Braves won their second in a row. How about Sh that? Shut out the Phillies today two nothing. Phillies lack of offense starting to catch up with them. Jonathan Viara for the fourth time he's two for three today had a blue pit to drive and run his last time up. Viara now three for seven in this series. Jeanette and Luke Croy to follow. So glad that in baseball the bullpens they've gotten away from what Tony La Russa and Bobby Cox brought in was working these relievers one inning. Robots can go three. And you know you're getting you get them in two innings of work. You don't kill your bullpen. Out to center field. Sesman is easing back. One out. Well they'll keep the left hander ready. I guess for Newenheis. Because you're not going to bring him in here to face Jeanette. And then you got two right hand hitters Luke Roy and Carter. Jim Henderson the right hander on the bullpen just standing around right now. No, it, it's just if something blows up here. Jeanette is 0 for 2 in a walk. You know if Newenheis hits he's fifth in the order then something's brewing right. you know it's just a safety first. And at that point you could certainly see Craig Council call on a right hand batter rather than leave Newenheis in against Blevins if it gets to that point I don't I don't think Ryan Braun can swing the bat but if he can that's always something Terry <laughs> Collins has to keep in the back of his mind that Braun is sitting in that Milwaukee dugout. It's a nice change up from Robles a pitch we rarely see from him and it's 0 and 2. Jeanette just doesn't look comfortable at the plate at all. He's swung and missed it. Jeez. Uh, a lot of pitches today. I think that's six. I think it's more. You know, you're right. It's enough. Oh, geez. And seven. Third strikeout for Robles as he takes care of Jeanette on three pitches. Wow. Five in a row retired by Hotzel. It's like a split change he's throwing. Kind of like uh, Familia's split. Yes. Be a nice pitch for him to have an off speed pitch. So, two out and nobody on. Now, Jonathan Lucroy is 0 for 3 and takes a slider for a strike. You know, Robles is kind of out of the mold of uh, Pedro Borbone, although Pedro Borbone threw the hard. There's Carlos Torres. Oh, my goodness. Pitched last night. Of course, he can pitch every day. We saw that for three years. Here's your Land Rover Brewers box score. Big day for Ramon Flores. First big league home run. He's driven in three of the four Milwaukee runs. The former Yankee. But the Mets have fought back from three runs down to get even. And Robles trying to keep it right there here in the seventh. Luke Roy 0 for 6 in this series so far. And he lifts one foul. Campbell. Over toward the railing. Runs out of room. That was one happy fan who grabbed that ball. You see that smile? Mile wide. It's nothing like catching a baseball when you go to a game. I never got close to one. I got one in all my years as a fan. One. You got in probably, the upper probably tank? Went, no, no. It's, uh, the load section behind home plate at. Uh, oh, that's when you snuck up in a blowout? Snuck down. Yes. <laughs> snuck down, down. Excuse me. <laughs> I admit it. <laughs> <laughs> Might have done that. Might have done that a few times. <laughs> Rennie Stennett. Really? Fouled it off. Wasn't Fouled. Rennie Stennett the one that went seven? Seven for seven. Seven for seven in, in San Francisco. In a nine inning game, which is almost impossible. How many times he gets seven at bats in a nine? I, game. I, I hear you. But he fouled it off. Uh, Bob Apodaca threw the pitch, and I've had that ball ever since. 
1972. Luke Wright just got a piece to stay alive. So in Boston, Joe Kelly for the Red Sox is a no hitter going through six innings against the Indians. 98 pitches, though, through six. It's no chance, right? We'll see. John Farrell, a pitcher himself, former teammate with Cleveland. Kelly just now starting the seventh. Robles ahead one and two on Luke Roy. And he flies one down the right field line. Long run for Granderson. Sliding, but he can't get to it. Tough play right there. There's so little room between the line yep. and that sidewall. Yeah, he just slid to, he had no chance. Almost landed in the plastic bag. I thought they banned plastic bags. You have to pay a nickel. They're banned in South uh, in the Hamptons, you know. I think it's San Francisco. Paper too. bags now. Seventh pitch of the at bat coming to Luke Roy. And he fouls mm. another one. We mentioned the Cardinals earlier. They're getting good pitching today from Mike Leak, who has not had the easiest of times. They're up six nothing on Arizona. Yadier Molina, who's been hitting over 300 all year, has his first home run of the year today for the Cardinals. St. Louis two games over 500 starting the day. I had one year with the Mets. I forget which one where I didn't hit a home run to the middle of May, but I was hitting high 300. Broken back, mm. shallow right center. Cespedes oh. on the run to make the catch. He turned it into an extra gear. The ball didn't have much air under it, and Cespedes hustling over to grab it. Stretch time, 4-4. On your Tri Honda dealer, hurry into your local Tri Honda dealer for great savings on 2016 models. Oh, that's right. So a guy walks into the bar, and the bartender says, Why the long face? <laughs> oh, who was the, the actor that passed away, in Mr. Ed Show? Oh, 96 Wilbur, years old. Alan Young. Yes. Yes. 
96 years of age. It's a long life. Wilbur. Yeah, I remember. Carlos Torres will work for the second straight night. He got his National League Championship ring yesterday. Juan Lagares will pinch hit for Hansel Robles. Job well done by Hansel. Two hitless innings. Lagares' last action came Thursday night. Went 0 for 2 against the Nats, including a long fly ball to left that almost left the yard. Torres faced two batters yesterday. Got Rene Rivera on a ground out, gave up a base hit to Alejandro De Aza. And Lagares fouls off the cutter, and it's 0 2. No, oh, Carlos, one of those guys we've seen enough of. He loves to work. You never know what you're going to get from him, but you know one thing: if you're going to beat him, you're going to have to beat him. He can be wild as a March hare one time, and then just zip right through the order. Granderson and right to follow. 0-2 to Lagares, and he checks his swing, and he went around. Oh, Gary Cedarstrom with the aggressive punch out, mm. one away. Don't know about that. No, no way. Come on. Did not appeal. No, I don't think so. So Torres gets a strike out. And here's Granderson. Pops one up. And that'll come back out of play. Zach Davies went the first five and a third from Milwaukee. Gave him four runs and five hits. Two home runs, including Granderson's leadoff home run in the first inning. Curtis. Now with four leadoff home runs this year, 39 in his career, and 15 as a Met, one behind Jose Reyes's career Mets record. Where he set the season record last year when he hit seven leadoff home runs, and he's already got four, a little over a quarter of the way through this season. Mets box score brought to you by Land Rover. Granderson and Cespedes with home runs. Cespedes continues to carry this Mets offense. 14 home runs now. Leads the league in slugging percentage. Just made a terrific running catch in center field to have that last half inning. He has been everything the Mets could have possibly hoped for when they re signed him. He's a star. That's what he is. Granderson takes ball four a little bit high. So Curtis, who has not been walking much, gets a one out walk, and David Wright will come up with a man on. You know, when you think back to the offseason, Keith, and you think about Cespedes going into the free agent market expecting the six or seven year deal for the huge dollars and not getting those right. offers. I mean, the Nats supposedly offered him five years. And Probably not quite the money he wanted, but he, you know, he came back here for fewer years. You think about the market being the way it was, and you wonder whether some teams that might have passed on Cespedes might be having some uh, second thoughts as right as to vacate on the pitch for Torres. Well, I tell you what, and here's the up and in pitch. Lacroix set up a way. I would not want to see this year Cespedes in a national uniform. Well, think about it in these terms too. I mean, he came back and took the three-year deal, but he has the one-year opt-out. So with the year that he's having, you know, if he keeps going at this rate, there's every chance he'll opt out and be a free agent again at the end of the year. And you wonder at that point what the market will be like. And that's a long way down the road. And yes, brought him back. Hoping to get back to the World Series this year and worry about the coming years when they come. You saw those uh, statistics on him. 5'10, 220. That is a monster. Cespedes. Granderson runs, right swings and misses. Lucroy's throw not in time. First stolen base of the year for Curtis Granderson. Good time to do it. And that puts the lead run in scoring position. And, let's and the see Brewers the may challenge this. Mm, it's close. And Craig Council is going to ask for the challenge. Let's see. And he may get satisfaction. He may. You got and my that eraser. Cer that certainly appears as though Jeanette's 
Glove hit the thigh before the spikes hit the bag. And that's what I get for marking it too quick. Play under review brought to you by Mazda driving matters. We have seen several steals of second overturned just in the last few days. And it's generally this look, the center field look, that has provided the definitive call. And that certainly appears to show that Granderson was out. <coughs> and this apparently is not going to take long. Out. And he is out. So the Brewers win the challenge. Granderson's first steal of the year is taken off the board. Instead, it's the second out of the inning. Two to four on the caught steal. Good effort, though. Good time to steal. Good smart play. Was that two to four or two to six? Two four. So now two out and nobody on for right. And David shoots one foul, two and two. Right is 0 for 3 today. Three hits in his last 31 at bats. Called out on strikes twice today. The last one appeared to be a little off the plate. That sitting coach Kevin Long came to his defense and was ejected from the game. Cutter fouled away. Conforto would be next. Brewers four runs five hits the Mets four runs seven hits were in the seventh. And the curveball misses from Torres three and two. Well if you're Carlos Torres. You got to go right after David Wright here. I'm surprised at that 2 2 curveball. And you. The Brew Crew only has one left hander, and that's Chris Capuano, and no one's up in that bullpen. Capuano pitched two innings last night, so he's probably not even available. David fouls off the cutter. I just don't see how any major league team can go with 12, 12 pitchers and seven out there in the bullpen, not have two left handers. It just hamstrings your manager. Well, and in the case of the Brewers, Capuano is, is not a situational lefty anyway. And David draws the walk. Second walk of the inning issued by Torres. Now Conforto will come up with a man on. Sets the stage for Mr. Conforto. Well, Conforto drilled a double over the head of Flores in right field back in the first inning. And then he walked on four pitches in front of Cespedes' home run in the sixth. One for two on the day. Conforto's home run last night went to the opposite field. The first opposite field home run he's hit this season, but he had five of them over his nine home runs last year. Adrian Johnson is not a high ball umpire. That pitch was up, but anything borderline high strike, it's, it's a ball. Mm. Sliced away, one and one. Adrian's also not a fair ball down the third baseline umpire. The third base umpire in Santana's no hitter when Beltron hit oh, that ball down the line. Oh, that's right. Fouled away. I think One and two. Got quick pitch there a little bit. Almost a balk. Yeah, you don't want to be too quick with a man on base. Right, it was almost a balk, and I think that's why it got by Conforto. You've got to get in that box and you must be ready. By the way, Joe Kelly's no hitter was broken up in the top of the seven. Keeping you up to date. Two and two now to Conforto. Now this was always Torres. Lots of pitches. Lots of three two counts. Well, you got Cespedes looming on deck. And that certainly helps Conforto. See something to hit in this at bat. Yeah, with the Torres, though, he's got that natural cutter. Nothing straight. Mm -hmm. Already 20 pitches deep in this inning. He struck out one and walked two. 
And Conforto hits one off the fist to right field. And Flores eases over. And that retires the side. On to the eighth we go at City Field. Mets and Brewers tied at four. In the bottom of the sixth, tied the ball game, and Addison Reed comes on now in relief of Hansel Robles, who threw two scoreless. Getting down to the end of this way go. Reed was terrific last night, pitched a one, two, three, eighth inning, and was dominant. And we have to watch him. Hopefully, he'll have a clean inning, folks. And I want you to watch him when he walks off the mound, where he tips his hat back. It reminds me <laughs> so much of Nolan Ryan, the gunslinger <laughs> thing. <laughs> Chris Carter, dangerous hitter, leading off in the eighth inning, and takes a fastball for a strike. Well, two hitless innings for Robles. And quickly 0 and 2 to Carter. Carter has two career at bats against Reed. One of them he hit a home run. But he's admired a couple of fastballs and now he's in a hole. Kirk New and Heiss on deck. Well, Reed throws hard. I know the gun's at 92, but 93 and all this, you know, 97 stuff. 92, 93, 94 is plenty. If you have a good breaking ball, you don't need to be throwing 97 to get people out. Quick pitch misses high. Tyler Thornburg is up in the Milwaukee bullpen. And Carter goes down on strikes. Reed fans the first man to face him. Third time Carter's been struck out today. Two seamer or four seamer, I'm not sure, but it's straight as a string. Four seamer. Oh, two seamer, right? I forget. It was a four seamer. Four seamer, right. I, you know what? I'm not a pitcher. I, I don't care how they grip it. I just follow the ball. <laughs> like Mitch Miller. <laughs> follow the bouncing ball. Kirk Neuenheis has struck out all three at bats today. All of that against Jacob DeGrom, who fanned seven and five innings, but didn't fare particularly well. DeGrom charged with four runs, five hits, three walks, gave up a home run to Ramon Flores. Nope. But the bullpen has been spectacular for the Mets. Grounded down to first, easy play for Campbell, and Neuenheis retired two away. 
It's the best way to start your weekday. Join Suki Scott and the Pix 11 news team with breaking news as it happens. Caitlin Monte has up to the minute traffic and Linda Church with the forecast six to nine on the Pix 11 morning news where every story hits home. Coming out of the tunnel at your first big league game and seeing the expanse. As a fan? Oh, oh a candlestick as park. A kid. Cardinals. That was always the greatest feeling in the world as a kid yep. at Shea because you couldn't see the field when you're in the concourse behind the stands. Right. And you come up the tunnel. Same thing in candlestick. All that green. Like Stan Musial left his tickets 1962 behind the third base dugout, which was the Cardinal dugout. And I remember I came through the expanse, and that's when Candlestick was wide open and all the way over, and you could see across the bay and all the shipping. And I remember my focus right on Dick Grote. He didn't have his hat on. He was playing catch. Base hit up the middle. Sorry, Gare. And he was bald. And I said, it just didn't. I went to Dad. I went, ball players aren't bald, are they? <laughs> Dad goes, that's a pretty good player down there, Keith. By the way, 60 <laughs> years later, Dick Rode is still bald, and he's he's a, he's a terrific guy. Do you know Dick at I all? I don't know. I'd love the, to meet him. He does the color broadcast still for the University of Pittsburgh basketball game. He's a great college basketball player at Duke. Batting champion, 1960, yeah. right? He's the MVP that year. Yep. For the Pirates. So Hill is on base for the fourth time. Here's Alex Presley, and he takes a strike. Hill already has a stolen base today. That was in a potential strike him out throw him out situation. See if he's inclined to try and swipe one here with Presley at the plate. Presley's hit the ball hard twice today. He's one for three. <coughs> and he fouls back the fastball and two. But I know what you mean when you see the big ballpark and the players in their uniform. You know, it's not like TV, it's live, and they look like giants to me. Mm -hmm. O2 from Reed. And the slider down. One and two. Well, Ramon Flores, who has been the big story for Milwaukee today, is on deck. Reed trying to keep him there with two out. Presley stays alive. Aaron Hill. Mm. Stay. Not a, great, not a great stolen base percentage, no. but yeah. he's three of four this year. Jeez. Someone should have put the brakes on him a long time ago. <laughs> he's 34 years old now. One two coming. And Presley takes up and away two and two. Working for the third straight day. Mm. We had a one, two, three inning on Thursday, a one, two, three inning last night. Got the first two tonight, but gave up the hit to Hill, and now Hill will be in motion with three and two on Presley. Granderson very deep in right field. Presley stays alive. Curtis always does play a deep right field. Well, you got to play no doubles here. Right. You hate to, you know, right now if the ball gets by you down the line or in the gap, but the runner on the move, it's not, it's going to be a run. Again, the three-two, and he just missed. Did he swing? He no. did not. So ball four to Presley, and that pushes the go-ahead run to second, and it gets Ramon Flores to the plate one more time. He did not swing here. Wanted the fastball away, came on the other side of the plate. Had the corner, it was low. Yeah. So now Flores, who had his first big league home run in the second off to Grom, added a sacrifice fly in the fourth, then struck out against Robles in the sixth. Two out and two on, 4 4 game, eighth inning. And Reed misses low, and Pulecki's going to take it back to him. And there is Ryan Braun on deck. 
So Braun who has not yet played in this series because of a sore back. Ready to pinch hit. Hill at second Presley at first with two out. And Flores takes a knee high strike. The hardest pitch Reed has thrown in this outing. 94. Foul back. And now Reed in ahead of the count one and two. One and two to Ramon Flores. Grounded foul. Good breaking ball. Just barely stayed in this at bat. This was a good pitch. A lot of work for Reed pitching on the third straight day. About to throw his 24th pitch of this eighth inning. Low, two and two. Two on, two out, two and two to Flores. Just got a piece of that slider running in on his hands. Boy, I'll say it wasn't as good as the other one, but it was way inside. He stays in the at bat, this youngster. Slider up off the plate just gets a piece again the 2 2 Did they break his bat it's a good battle right here checks the bat it's OK and Reed has to throw another pitch. This will be the eighth pitch of the at bat coming from Reed to Flores with the go ahead run at second and two out. And he bounces the slider. Ploiecki blocks it. Now it's three and two again. And again, that'll mean the runners will be in motion. Another breaker. So against each of the last two hitters, Presley and Flores, Reed's gotten ahead but unable to put him away. Got to run a fastball away here. Hill and Presley get set to run. And he strikes oh. him out with a slider. Addison Reed went right back to the breaking ball, and he strands two in the top of the eighth. Hard working inning for Reed, and now Cespedes. Who has had a big hand in this game will get a turn at bat to lead off for the Mets in the bottom of the eighth. Time of the Brewers, four to four.
Langone Medical Center made for New York. Play of the game brought to you by Sleepy's, the only mattress professionals, and it was that man, Cespedes. Don't throw it. That was a 2 2 count, I believe. Change up. Adios. So Cespedes, who's 14th home run tied the game, will come to bat leading off in the bottom of the eighth against the new Milwaukee pitcher Tyler Thornburg. Thornburg recorded his first save not too long ago against the Cubs. Big strikeout guy. 28 strikeouts and 17 in change. Cespedes two for three today. And the first pitch curveball misses high for ball one. Neil Walker on deck, then has Dribble Cabrera against Thornburg, who filled in for the closer Jeremy Jeffress on Thursday against the Cubs and got his first save. Curveball pulled foul, and it's one and one. Thornburg, who went to Charleston Southern University, the same school that produced Mets reliever Bobby Parnell. Bobby just got released, did he not? Yeah, I don't know if uh, don't know if his career is over now. Came back from Tommy John and it just never clicked. See if he gets another shot. Hit sharply, but mm. the second baseman Jeanette shaded toward the middle. There to throw out Cespedes. Even his outs are hard. Ripped. Nice play by Jeanette. Stayed in front. Cespedes didn't even bother to touch first. He's got a. You always. There's the swing. Look at the level. Hey, he really reaches there. And that ball away, and he's just so doggone strong. And we'll take a look. He uses his entire body. Now Walker, who's one for three, had a base hit to left field his last time up, batting left-handed. It's cooled off since the hot start. One for six in this series, and the curveball in for a strike. One and one. And get back to the home plate umpire, Adrian Johnson. He, David Wright, got called out on a pitch on the outside corner. He's got a, genu a generous outside corner. Very helpful to the pitchers. It's very much how Lee Wire was uh, back in my day. Lee Wire was a very good umpire. But boy, he'd give that pitcher that three, two, three inches on the outside corner. And just Lee, I can't hit it. It's too far away. By Eric Gregg. Eric Gregg was a good umpire when I was playing. He got a little full of himself. One of the great guys. Well, um, he, I mean, his outside corner. He got, got crazy. To be enormous. <laughs> that game, Levon Hernandez struck out 15 against the Braves well, in the about, league championship series. Well, how about Glavin? How helpful he was to Glavin? Grounded down to first. Fair ball for Carter. Easy play for the second out. So Thornburg has retired the first two here in the bottom of the eighth. And now as Dribble Cabrera will bat with two out and nobody on. So Mr. Thornburg has a big overhand 12 to 6 curveball. Which means for him to get that kind of a break in rotation, he's right over the top. Big guy. Fastball at 95 misses away. And two and zero. Oh. Very widespread, like a gunfighter at OK Corral. Like Santana. Yes. Like John Wayne and Rio Bravo. <laughs> Throws hard. He's got a good arm. 
And LaCroix is going, LaCroix is going, geez. Another one. I remember he missed time with a concussion last year. <laughs> oh my gosh. He has had enough. One thing good about a night like this is you don't, you don't have to eat the spread, even though Tony Carullo in that visiting clubhouse has great spreads. You can go out to dinner tonight in New York. Curveball strikes out Cabrera. Nice looking one, two, three inning for Tyler Thornburg. Sends us off to the ninth in a 4 4 game at City Field. May 27th, the Mets face the Dodgers at 710 as part of 1986 weekend. All fans in attendance will receive an 86 replica jersey complete with racing stripe. Courtesy of Dunkin' Donuts for tickets, visit Mets.com slash 1986. I'm not so sure you're going to want that uniform, folks. Are you kidding me? Everybody wants your uniform. <laughs> Jay Reese Familia comes into a tie game in the ninth inning. As most closers do, they have a tie ball game in a home field. You bring them in in the top of the ninth. Familia worked a 1 2 3 inning last night for his 14th save. Colin Walsh will be the pinch hitter. Walsh, a switch hitter who's hitting under 100. Rule five draft pick swings through the fastball, nothing in one. Well, he's been their main pinch hitter. 15 pinch hits, one for 15. He's the only left handed bat on the bench today for Craig Council. Approaching 7 o'clock, lights are on. It's been a cloudy day, so with the late afternoon start, shadows were never an issue today. Jonathan VR on deck. Jacob DeGrom started today it was not his best outing by any means 100 pitches in five innings Hansa Robles and Madison Reed did strong work to get the Mets through the sixth seventh and eighth. Reed will probably be unavailable tomorrow third straight day 28 pitches today. You can bet the house on that. Two and two now to Walsh. A little rain falling now. There have been such a, an ominous forecast today, but there hadn't been a drop till just a moment ago. Two two coming, and Walsh fouls it off. Walsh is a Stanford kid. Oh, he was with the Oakland organization, and Milwaukee took him in the Rule Five draft. So they have to keep him all year or offer him back. 26 years old. Can play some third base and some outfield. 
in tight. And familiar runs the count full. <laughs> Matt pitchers have walked five today and struck out 12. Walsh did you see him a follow good accounting of himself. Did you see him follow through with that swing? Hit himself in the helmet. Can we see that again, guys? Watch the watch the follow through. It's <laughs> <laughs> a wake up call. I've never seen that. I have never seen that. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Eighth pitch of the at bat coming from familiar to Walsh. And he takes it for a call third strike. Dotting the inside corner, Familia strikes out his first bat. Really a good pitch. Just paint your wagon. Got him. From the stretch, always Familia. Look at the big legs, the power behind everything into that. In that motion, just to deliver a pitch, a lot of energy. 13 strikeouts for Met pitchers today. Now Jonathan VR, who's two for four, a single and a double. He's driven in a run, and he takes a knee-high strike. Remember a month ago, when there was concern about Familia. Yes, I was concerned about him all spring. He did not have his sinker. It was wild, but he's in a he's in rhythm now. It's back. That's wicked. Nasty slider, and it's 0 and 2. That is just wicked right there, that pitch. <laughs> 0 and 2 to VR. He just got a piece of that sinker. Barely. You gotta wonder sometimes if it's the sinker or the splitter, you know, Garrett, because he just he throws that splitter too. It's hard for me, and I watch carefully. It's, it's a sinker. When he's got a sinker working, it looks almost like it, a split. It does, and I can't tell unless we have a replay like that with our really the crack only, troops. Only way you can tell is just by the radar gun. It's about two or three miles an hour less on the split. The slider bounces in one and two. The Yankees won their game today. That's four in a row. Tanaka out in Oakland. The Yankees win five to one. One two in the air, left center field. Long run back in the gap near the wall, and it's oh. off the fence, bouncing away from Cespedes. VR on his way to third. The throw, no, he's going to go back to second. The oh. throw is wide, and Wright is able to dive and keep it from going to the dugout. VR had a notion about trying for three, then realized it was Cespedes slammed on the brakes. Wow. But if David Wright doesn't make that save, VR might have scored. Well, Familia's not backing up, number one. There's a sinker that doesn't sink, goes with it. I've got to see how he's out of the box here. Did he think he had a home run? He can't possibly think he has a home run. He's only got one on the season. I thought this had triple written all over it. And someone's got to let Cabrera know to cut it off. Well, that ball could have bounced around for a long time. Well, runner on nobody backing up. It would have been minimum a runner on third mm -hmm. and one out. So now the go-ahead run at second with one out. Here's Scooter Jeanette, who's 0 for three in a walk today. Cabrera makes a run to the bag, but Familia simply steps off. So that's. Three hits today for VR, his second double of the game, and he barely missed a home run. So now Familia has some heavy lifting to do. Jeanette at the plate, Luke Croy on deck. And Jeanette drops a bunt foul. What I don't do you think like about that that's play? terrible. I mean, I, I, I know what he's probably thinking is that I'm having a terrible day. Let's see Villar here. I would like to see him out of the box if he was busting out from the get go. But if you're Scooter Jeanette, you've got to be thinking about driving this run in, not leaving it to the next it guy. Precisely.
right creeps it a little closer at third after that bunt attempt. One and one to Jeanette. Well, here's the answer to my question here. Let's see what he's doing on the ball. No, he's hustling. He's hustling. He's just not a speedster. Not that much of a speedster, even though he's got 14 stolen pillows. I just think he hit the ball so hard. Yep. Came off the wall in a hurry. Grounded at Cabrera. Runner will advance. The throw by Cabrera, oh. and VR is out at third. Wow. Thank you. The go ahead run. Taken off base. Now the go ahead run is at first with two out. Giff wrapped it, wrapped and put a bow on it. Thank you very much. As that gets the runner out of scoring position, very heads up again. Almost hit the runner on the throw, but but Cabrera making a nice heads up play here. Now normally, Keith, they tell you as a base runner, if the ball's hit behind you, you can go. Why was that a bad play? Because it hit right at the shortstop. It has to then nothing to do. Yes, you have. It's nothing to do with where you're positioned. If the shortstop is going to his left up the middle, you go. If it's right at him or he's going to his right, you got to hold. There's Luke Roy with the go ahead run to first and two out. Also, Cabrera was playing, was playing shallow. He was right behind the runner. <coughs> now, if he's playing deep, then it's a little different kind of a play. Well, I think if he's playing deep and Cabrera sees him break, Cabrera's going to come to the ball faster, too, Gary. Luke Roy punches one to shallow right. Walker goes out to get it, and that retires the side. Deep sigh of relief for Jay Reese Familia after VR almost took him over the wall. He's thrown out a third, and the game's still tied. Let's go back to that play where VR tried to advance to third. Well, this is a real gutty play by Cabrera with one out. You can go get the easy out, but it doesn't let him go to third base. But this is an aggressive play by Cabrera. Hey, I want to get the runner out of scoring position. And he's right there. He's already got his bead. He knows he's got a chance. So that's just a good aggressive play. And the right play is out by a mile, Gare. But from VR's perspective, right, the ball's hit to his left, but Cabrera's standing right behind him. So what's his responsibility there? You got to turn around and find out where your everybody is, your outfield when you're on a base, when you're a base runner. Particularly your middle infielders that are holding you on. And like I said, the rules overrules everything. If the ball's hit behind you, it's overruled. It's hit right at the shortstop. You can't go. He was out by 10 feet. Eric Campbell leading off the last of the ninth. Mets looking for their first walk-off win of the year. 
Campbell's one for three. Plawecki on deck, and then the pitcher spot. And Michael Blazik on the mound for the Brewers gets even one and one. Blazik, the fifth Milwaukee pitcher of the day. Twenty-seven year old right hander in his third year with the Brewers. He bounces the slider two and two. Well, a Brewer bullpen got off to a shaky start, but their ERA is below four. They've blown five saves though, twelve of seventeen. Last 14 games, the bullpen ERA 1.62. Grounded toward the hole. Jeanette can't oh. get it. Base hit. And Eric Campbell starts the last of the night with a seeing eye hit. And that's what happens when you play deep on the infield. I think the cut of the grass made the ball come up on Jeanette. I could be wrong. Yep. It did come up. A little funky hop yep, right I, don't, I, I wanted nothing to do with that out. That did not hit the, the cut of the grass. It just took a bad hop. But I wanted nothing to do with the cut of the grass. Now, how do you play this? You got Plawecki, who's at a rough home stand at the plate. You got Matt Reynolds on deck to pinch hit, who's never had a big league hit. Tough call here. You're going to bunt. Okay, and that's a good call. That's always a good thing to do for a pitcher. When you're not sure, this can go either way here, a bunt or let the guy swing. Throw over to first and see if the hitter commits. And he did commit on that first pitch. Now, Duda probably is not available. Lagaris and Diaz already used, so that leaves Reynolds in the backup catcher, Rivera. See if the bunt's still on. Kluwecki gives himself up. And the curveball in for a strike from Blazek. And Kluwecki looked a little shaky taking that pitch. Well, it's been a tough night for him, and I think that's what's got Terry put in the safety, playing at safety first, going for the for the bunt, get the runner in scoring position. Kowalski 0 for 3 today, three ground balls, just one for 13 on this homestand. Campbell at first, and nobody out. Lewicki lays off the curve and it's one and one. If you get the bunt down, Gary, it takes the double play out. If Reynolds doesn't come through, you get Granderson up a left hand hitter and a veteran. And they probably walk him with pitch to right. But I'll yeah. I'll take my chances. Mm -hmm. Yep. So far the bunt's been on all the way with Plawecki. Hill creeps in at third. Kevin gives himself up and lays off the slider. Did not offer at it. Two and one. Let me tell you, this is not an easy spot for Pulwecki. He's probably been a hitter his whole life. How many times has he bunted in his baseball career? Professional and collegiate. The answer is probably not many. Right. Now it's two and one. Takes the curve for a strike. Now it's two and two. What do you do? You gotta let him hit. Kevin had one sacrifice last year. That's the only one of his major league career. He had three in his minor league career over four seasons. Of course, the risk you run here if you. Have to swing away is the double play. Got to hope for maybe a three. Uh, you can't even run him with a three-two count, Gary. Hill stays in on the grass. Two and two to Plawecki. And he lays off the curveball, and now it's three and two. Now the question is, do you send got Campbell? You. He got to. You got to make it happen. You got to. I think you fear the double play much more than you fear the strike him out throw. Campbell can steal the base. Yes, he can. And Blazik uh, has a propensity for his uh, slider. He loves it. Could be ball four. Coming up when we're done here on Picks 11, it's Broadway Boxing on SNY. It's WB Mason Post Game Live.
walks have been a problem for Blazek. 12 walks in 21 innings this year. Campbell at first, nobody out. Three and two to Pluecki. 4-4, bottom of the ninth. Campbell runs. And Pluecki fouls back the fastball. So Campbell was in motion. And he will be again. Base hit here would be sweet. No. Not running, and it's too high. Ball four, and that moves the potential winning run to second base. Terrific at bat by Pawecki with two strikes and throwing a 3 2 slider, and now he's in a world of hurt. And that makes it easier for Terry. Now he can have Reynolds bunt. Yes, and a, more, a better player to bunt. More, more familiar with bunting. So Craig Council will head out to the mound to talk this over. And how they want to handle things. How do you play your bunt defense? Do you crash and, and, and play the wheel play here if you're the Brewers? Against a rookie who's never had a big league hit. He's gonna bunt. You could you could run the risk of a real play exposing shortstop. I would play it straight up, Jeff. They're bringing the shortstop way over in the hole. Reynolds had five sacrifices in his, in his minor league career. Only had four big league at bats. So it looks like they are going to run the wheel. Yep. Which why not disguise it? I don't understand this tipping it off. Shortstop all the way over in the hole, ready to cover third. Reynolds showing bunt. And they run the wheel, and Reynolds fouls it off. So VR was going to cover third. Hill was crashing with Carter, leaving the middle of the infield wide open. So if you're Terry Collins giving the information to Reynolds, if he sees the wheel like that, do you want him to swing? Number one, you didn't know how they're going to play it. How are you going to relay that to him now unless Tuffle comes down? I think he's just going to bunt. This, you got to bunt here. You got to get it down. Hard to do with three guards, guys charging. He bunts it foul, and now it's 0 and 2. So that changes the circumstances. Gave Ploiecki a chance to swing with two strikes. Will he do the same with Reynolds? Granderson on deck, right behind him. Campbell carrying the winning run at second. Ploiecki at first. Brewers set up in their wheel defense again, but they want to talk it over at the mound before this pitch is thrown. They still had VR over in the hole, and that may not have been the exact defense they wanted with two strikes. How do you run the wheel with two strikes when the hitter may be swinging the bat? Only if it's a pitcher. I don't think you can do it with you a position can't. player. Cannot. So there's but look still, where VR is look now. Where he's playing. Look, I mean, it's just setting up. They look like they're expecting a bunt with two strikes. But he can get the third base playing deep for the shortstop. And Reynolds does show bunt. And the runner goes, and the bunt is down. Beautiful. And the runners will advance. Beautiful. Campbell took off for third, leaving no option. And then Reynolds got down a perfect bunt. And now the winning run is a third with one out. Wow. And that is a perfect bunt. Everybody charging. He, this would have been successful without anybody running. And I, I don't know if Terry put this on or not. But just a beautiful bunt. Boy, I don't think he's not. Uh, Reynolds is not breathing a sigh of relief. Now they'll walk Granderson intentionally and load up the bases for David Wright. You got a breaking ball pitch, Gary, and that's favorable to David. A secondary pitch not thrown as hard as a fastball. He's got to drive that ball and think right center field. 
David has had one career at bat against Blazek, 0 for 1. So in what has been a very difficult stretch, one of the most difficult he's ever had in his career, especially chock full of strikeouts in a spot where Blazek wants nothing more than a strikeout. David Wright will have the game in his hands. And there's ball four to Granderson. David is 0 for 3 today. Two strikeouts, a fly ball, and then he walked his last time up. Rain falling. Wright trying to end this ball game right here. Making Blazek wait. Infield in. He's back at double play depth. Wow. The outfield is in. That's very unusual. Oh, man. I'll say. They are really selling out to the double play on the infield. You've got to bring it in. You get a slow ground ball to a middle infield, or the game's over. I don't think I've ever seen this before. I have never seen it. No way. The outfield shallow because anything over their heads ends the game anyway. Well, they can get closer. Not close enough. Campbell the winning run at third. And that's off the plate and now it's 2-0. and Well now you're in trouble. Two sliders and you can't throw a strike. Nowhere to go here. David Wright's last walk off RBI came in 2012. Oh, and way outside, and Luke Coy did well to keep that from going to the backstop. Ooh. One more like that, and Blazek might walk in the winning run. No, Archie Bell and the drills here. A serious tighten up. So, after the intentional walk to Granderson, Blazek's falling behind right 3 0. Nowhere to put him. He lines one to right center field. Base hit on the Mets win the ball game. Campbell comes in with the winning run. David Wright, the walk-off hero, and the Mets win it five to four.